What's up, everybody? Welcome to Flagrant 2. It's your boy Schultz. I'm here with Akash Singh, Alex Media, Mark Gagnon. The truffle is in the building, and we have a very special guest. Uh, I've been wanting to get this, this very special guest on for a very long time. Finally, he got some free time. Okay. Um, and, and an ankle... Uh, some ankle jewelry <laughs> that is worthy of showing off to millions of people. I don't want to open with it, though. It's, yeah. it's the other one. Just It's the other foot. Oh, I don't even know. Yeah, sure you do. I have so many <laughs> sure anklets. I have so many anklets. anklet on. There's Schultz. no way. We have Neil Brennan in the building, hey! everybody. Yeah! We have Neil yeah! Brennan in the motherfucking <laughs> building. King uh, of the anklet. We're going to get to the anklet in a second. I'm all sure right. we have tons of questions about ayahuasca, all this shit. But yeah, I do, yeah, yeah, I yeah, do yeah, want to yeah. clear up a, a rumor that's going on right now. I love it. I told you this earlier, but this is a real rumor. The rumor is um, that somebody, not Kim Kardashian, wrote her monologue. That, that it wasn't penned by Kim, but in fact, a writing team was assembled to write those jokes for her. Is this true or false? I have no idea. Okay. I don't know. I have no insight into it whatsoever. Are you sure you didn't sign an NDA? Or I didn't something? sign an NDA. I didn't. I didn't. Some of those jokes I wish I wrote. They yeah. were great jokes. You watched great the whole joke. monologue. I watched they, the whole monologue. She actually delivered uh, them well. Yeah. Say again. Delivered them well. She did deliver them cleanly, but you would have to agree she could have paused. It was a little, she was a little ahead of it. I like that she didn't pause. I like that she bit the end of the laugh. Because usually when you have someone like a politician or somebody go up there who's never done stand up, they just wait and then it's a restart right. every single time. She was able to build some momentum because she was catching I th the end I of the laugh. I think she could have increased the pleasure of the audience by 30%. She didn't even, it was one of fuck these things the where you're like, what the no. fuck is happening? <laughs> fuck the audience. Like, what is happening? This is so good. And by the end of it, you're like, I think she, this lady just did 14 perfect jokes in a row. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think she really doesn't give a fuck about SNL. She, I, I think, think, you yeah, know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think at the last joke where she'd she's never like, seen another numbers. monologue before. That's she'd it. never seen it. She's so like, she yeah, this like, is good enough. Yeah, like, what do I do? I just go and I say, before I shit on my entire family in existence? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> oh, wait, when I talk, guys laugh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, re I, I, I remember this yeah. from the from the 2000s before I met Kanye. Yeah. Yeah. Did you write on it? I had nothing to do with it. Because a buddy of mine, I told you, hit me up, and he was like, I saw Neil, Chris Rock, and Blake Griffin at the Mercer having lunch. Yeah, we were, we were working. We were trying to help Kim Kardashian. Like, <laughs> guys, we need to help Kim. Those are the three I would choose. Yo, yeah. Blake Griffin. Blake? What a look that is for Blake Griffin. They, to be they like, they think. got the best writers yeah, on the earth. Best they got writers Neil in the Brennan. country. They got Chris Neil. Rock. And of course. They got Blake Griffin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, good for him. He And then they were in the sketch. And so I don't think, uh, I have no idea who wrote it. And then somebody told me, like, I think Schumer wrote it. And Seth Rogen somehow was involved. I have no idea. No, but I, I think <laughs> no. the, uh, <laughs> the super I think the, uh, <laughs> come on. I think the uh, Che. If somebody goes, yo, Che wrote it. Like, okay, they I get definitely see that. That. They got a bunch of people. They like got funny people throw, that are writing there. Sam J. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God. Sam Amy Schumer. Beast. Keep the jokes. <laughs> Keep them. Anyway, um, okay. I just need to clear that rumor up before we start the podcast. Neil. Uh. Um, I need to know about this huge life change that you went through because I'm curious about ayahuasca. I don't know if you know this, but I had the shaman, Shaman Omar, on the podcast while we were in Miami. Did I you was really? this I didn't close know to doing ayahuasca. Why didn't you? I didn't feel like I needed it. You were wrong. <laughs> tell Schultz, me. Schultz, I'm here to tell, tell you me. that you were wrong. Uh, which one's shaman, uh, shaman Omar? Is he good looking? Yes. Afghan like, guy. Part Afghan, part uh, something else. One, Sorry, of a, one of them's like a, an eight or a nine. Mm. Maybe Shaman Omar. I'm Can we bring a picture Shaman of Shaman Omar? Shaman Omar? Because he's my friend. Hmm. Hard, um, seven. Uh, <laughs> hard seven. Hard <laughs> seven. Is that me What are you? What, what are you? What? Oh. What, do you? what do you consider yourself? <laughs> um, what do I consider myself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 11, 100%. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that doesn't surprise me at all. Why up? <laughs> um, what am I? Fuck it. We're here. Let's go. What are you? Well, first of all, I look at Akash Soft and... Soft nine. Wow, thank you. <laughs> soft, uh, though. I look yeah, at... Uh, yeah, he gave you a weak nine, though. I'm going to be a hard eight than a soft nine. That's disrespectful, no, this is actually really good. What is, what is Akash? When we get to dub, it's going to break his heart. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to break his heart. <laughs> Let's make him laugh. What is Akash? What is Akash? And judge him yeah. on... Uh, a white I'm judging him on the fact that people <laughs> have Indian. said... People yeah. have said that... Uh, I'm an Indian, 13. This is a little bit like looking in the mirror. Oh. A little oh, bit. That's right. That's right. People have 
said this right. a long time. You're and right, I see it. Yeah. That's a huge insult. You're Indian oh. Neil. <laughs> it is a huge. Dude, th- it is actually true. Can he put on the bifocals? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah Facial structure this. now with the beard. <laughs> I remember this. I can see. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Buddy. Wait a minute. Speaking of this, Mike. No. Yeah, exactly. Well, can't, you can't see shit. Do you buddy. feel better than everyone yet? <laughs> <laughs> I feel richer for yeah, sure. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so, wait a minute. Yeah. What is Akash? Out of ten, I mean, what are we? If I'm a nine, I mean, you're not a nine. I, I, we're, right. we're joking. <laughs> I, I inflated myself. I inflated you. Every you inflate, inflate, you're you know just, I mean? It's a two point discount. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, well, it's Celsius right, right now. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. inflating everybody, he still rated himself two points higher than. Of course, I would give you a point. I mean, if and then if you include, <laughs> you're um, on the board. Uh, I would How give you. No, he's saying he'd give me a point higher. Yeah, yeah I'll give him a point higher. <laughs> just if we're one point away, that's all. That just in fucking delusional confidence alone, yes, yeah. he's got yes, me right there. Lie to yourself, it works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, that's important. That's I, got, I mean, I'll give you a uh, Indian seven. Okay. Indian, Indian seven. seven. Oh, oh, I don't know what, what is no. happening again. No. I don't know what it means, no, but I'm saying room, Indian seven. Room. What does Indian it mean? Se- it sounds think- racist, doesn't it? Oh uh, yeah. Prove it. Yeah, yeah. Prove how that's racist. If it's a real Indian seven, I'll negotiate to a 10. What yeah, were the next you two go. numbers you were yeah. going to say after that? 11. Was that it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give, give you an Indian 7-Eleven for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the 11 is silent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, so one time, no, Indian seven. One time we were at a hotel right. and Fine. I was staying. I'm passing. I met Akash and his family at a hotel and the uh, this is in Times Square and uh, the hotel had put them in room 7-Eleven. Dead ass. It's happened and multiple times. they didn't even times. notice and, and they and they and they've never been more at home. Never. Am I wrong? Yeah, I did love loved the it. hotel. Yeah, they loved it. it. And it's happened multiple times since. Really? Multiple times, and I don't think I would have noticed one for you, but now I'd be like, oh, this is a thing. That's what you need white people for to point least, out racism. At least I haven't gotten nine eleven. Yeah. Yeah, they could have uh, put you. Ah, uh, yeah, Vala. Vala, Vala. Vala was two floors up having a party, dude. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mark. Oh, Mark is a. Uh, Ooh, I, I like mean, it smile. depends on where you are. <laughs> uh, that's a good point. There's like, if we're in New York, it this look doesn't work. Yeah, it no. doesn't in do Williamsburg, anything. Right. Williamsburg, it works. Williamsburg, yeah. yeah, yeah. But <laughs> in most parts of the, like Philly, you're five. I'll give them five dollars. Yeah. Uh, the South, you're Bring like. Maybe on an Indian scale. How do I do an in India? I mean, Indian. Um, Am I an Indian nine? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's fair skinned. He's got blue eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, I'll go. I'll go eight. I think you're a point better, better looking than me. Needed that. Needed yeah, that. Yeah. All right. So I'm. I'm leaving. I'm leaving the boards right now. No, Neil, not letting anybody have more than one point. <laughs> Let's don't get ahead He's of yourself. One point away. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What about Al? A- ankle bracelet. Right. Neil's crazy, dude. Yeah. I love He's a wild boy. Wild. Okay. Um, what about Al though? I'm I'm like playoff P. Um, <laughs> ankle bracelet Neil is uh, Al. Let me. It, why are you wearing the hat? Bad hairline, or you got good? Oh, no, no, show no. the hair. Just I'm growing it out. I'm growing it out. Oh but, shit! Yeah. No, no, no. I, that's gonna work. <laughs> that's gonna work. That'll do. That'll uh, do. Yeah. Seven. <laughs> Yo, Neil, seven. Yeah, I'll take it. And you're not even standing, bro. <laughs> nah, I'll take it. You yeah. like the seven? Yeah, I mean, yeah. he gave Akash a seven. Akash got some beautiful ass eyes. Yeah. He sure, does. That's he true. sure does. So who's a 10 to you? What guy's a 10? Uh, we forget that he'll spend a lot of time According, in Hollywood. Like Brad so Pitt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he's okay. hot. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, like Brad Pitt, you see him and you're like, fuck. You Momoa? don't think Mark's got Brad Pitt? No, give me time. I'll grow Old up. No, wait, no wait, you just said Momoa. Momoa, you're like a white Mom- You're like a shitty white Momoa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just couldn't? Yeah. You just couldn't? What about the yeah. You're I like an Aquaman, but you can only go down 10 meters. <laughs> 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 you can scuba dive. Yeah. Dude, Tony, Tony certified. Tony Inglis you're, said, I look like I look like Jason Momoa in the commercial where he takes all his muscles off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then you started doing creatine every single day. Yeah, not stop. This is dude. motivation. Not stop. Juice. This is motivation. Okay, what about Duff? Keep in mind, I know Duff looks Persian. Jewish? He's actually Jewish. Of course. Okay, of course. He's full. He's got the 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 posture of he's got Jewish laptop posture. Jewish laptop <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So Mike yeah. can't, yeah, you're because you're hypochondriac Jewish. Yeah. yeah. Gotta you replace got the, the six spring, million, of course. You got the spring cords, no shoot, no socks, which I are you wearing the Hidden side. Okay. Uh, your style, you've got an eight for style. He's a gay eight. Wow. 
Uh, looks wise, I gotta take you below. I'm taking you to a six. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, me, Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> Who else? Ryan Gosling. Else is it? Ryan, Ryan Gosling. Gosling. The yeah. other one. The other Ryan Gosling. Gosling's a ten. He's a ten. Yeah. Gosling? Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, Ryan I know. Reynolds? Yeah. I think I got Gosling, dude. You don't got Gosling. I think I got. Go- Hold on. I think I got Gosling. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> Son, your lips got thinner. Right? Like, it's oh. like butter. Like you just licking yeah, them this away. This is a, a long story, but Gosling sublet my place one time when okay. I had a place in New York, and for like six months or something. And when I came back, the motherfucker left books of poetry in my house. I was like, oh, this this kid's as good wow. as advertised. Like wow. reading poetry <laughs> in that a lot of candles, poetry that you can't do that. Which one is Gosling again? The gay one, clearly. Yeah, like you the, just compare the yourself to him. The, the, notebook. the notebook. The notebook. The notebook is gossip. Yeah. But no, he's kind of like tough. He does like a New York accent in his right. movies a little bit. He does like a fake New York accent. Yeah, like but he's a from fake. Vancouver. He's, yeah, he's a Disney kid. He's like, he's yeah. a Timberlake, yeah, Mickey Mouse Club. But good choice. I like the accent. Yeah. I think it's worth it. I, th- I still think I got him by half a point. <laughs> can, Hollywood? No, you, he looks like something. You can cut to Schultz. Son, you can cut to me, boy. You cut the shelves, you'll get, yeah. you'll, you'll deliver. Wait, you think you're better looking than me? <laughs> on my scale, yeah. Okay, on, on my scale. What Jewish scale, scale is he that? does like this Jewish scale. He uh, thinks he's a Jewish J-date? guy. J-date? Yeah. <laughs> I'm 60. He's getting swiped. Are you like, do you, are you, do you have, are you a doctor? Are you like, Bow do you have any of this stuff? Second. Show the top of your head to Neil, just for a second. Just the fr- top part, yeah. Oh, wow, you're actually doing well. Is that the, are you taking pills? Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, not all, in this not podcast. All. I don't know how hair. I avoid it. I'm doing right. great. Yeah, you actually <laughs> still have hair. I used to yank it. I don't know if that helped. For what? Like I, I read an article where they said uh, Anthony Perkins from Psycho used to pull his hair, and that kept him going bald. And I started when I was like 19. It may have nothing to do with anything, <laughs> but I do it, and it's. Uh, I think the hair speaks for itself. Is baldness in your family? <laughs> not really. Okay, okay, that probably that has much. more to do with it than... No, but so I like it. <laughs> 1962. I think, it's the, I think it's Anthony Perkins from Psycho. <laughs> <Yeah. advice. laughs> oh, there's Shaman Omar. Handsome yeah, guy, Yeah, he's good right? looking. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> so let's talk about this ayahuasca trip because I was, I was literally about to do it and then I felt like I didn't need it and a lot of the people I was speaking to that were doing it had basically said that they were um, having a lot of trouble moving past traumatic events in their life yeah they reach some sort of blockage and i'll be honest when i was in miami i was at the happiest part of my life so yeah i, I felt like i was almost like abusing if i use it i was like oh this is a fun goofy trip and, right. I, and i'm like i don't want to go into this territory yeah. unless i need it but yeah. again i might have gotten it wrong you're also like uh i would say a legitimately crazy shallow person no a legitimately, <laughs> a legitimately like not you're not neurotic or complicated right you're not like you don't have any inner life right. you just go i'm great good night um so, uh, so uh, what were you like before the ayahuasca That's what I was like. I know. this it is was, happy neil yeah. he just said you have no inner life um, <laughs> You you're, are, you're like not Mamoa? very. You're just not com- in a good way. Like I no, wish I I, I, I crave this. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you may not need it. Yes. Um, it to me, my experience. It by the way, it bores the shit out of people. So it's like telling people about your dreams. Like, right. and then you were there. It's just not that interesting. But I will say that uh, it I it was the first spiritual experience I'd ever had. You believe in God now? I do because wow. of taking it. Really. Will Smith's got a book coming out. He talks about it. He said it's the uh, the the only pure freedom he's ever felt mm. was doing ayahuasca. Will and he Smith. told me about it like five years ago. Yeah. And I was just like, eh. And then somebody else, text, Rock texted me about it. Rock texted me an article from the New York Times. What we're, an asshole. We're so old, we get our drug ideas from the New York Times. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then I got the guy. And then, so he like said it's the, the only freedom he's ever felt. Will yeah, the only true freedom he's ever felt. And he felt. can fuck around on his wife? Yeah. He is an open relationship. Yeah, and he still wife. and he still and needs to turn to plant. Yeah, but to that's because he was, it was retaliatory fucking around. You don't think he was fucking around first? Can we just, you know what I mean? Did you guys we'll talk about this endlessly? We wouldn't do that. No, not endlessly, but we no, were no, really no, disappointed. No, 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 not I, I. Will, I mean, who knows what's going on there? Yeah, you do. Um, I actually don't know. Really? No. 
I don't. I don't. Uh, it's. I don't. I don't care who people are fucking. Really, uh, I do. It's really important, <laughs> actually, so much to fun. me. I just yeah. like. I just don't care. I we just. I'm like, good for Neil's you. Fucking. You know, <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> uh, so we had dinner the other night, and Neil pulled up with uh, a guy and nice. a girl. Oh. And the girl <laughs> was a famous actress. I won't say the name. Okay. Neil. And then Ben came ben, out. Yeah, yeah. Right? Great, great company. Yeah, but yeah. when you, they all pulled up, I was like, Neil, is this? Am I Neil? Is Neil? Yeah. Um, yeah, I do. All right. I do a, I do a decent business. Like imagine a Kosh white, but with credits. Yes. Now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, there you go. <laughs> I feel like like a kid who like came to get water at a, at like I was sleeping and the parents were having a party and I just came out and said mean shit to everybody like yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're ugly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, so Wait, so what's Vala? Oh boy, I was hoping we wouldn't Ooh. get to this. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. You're heart. Afghan. Yeah. Pa- Pakistani Afghan. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, oh, how do you say that? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, uh, I mean, six. What do you need? 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 What's gonna, what, what's gonna make you feel I, good? Yeah, what do you need? <laughs> Talk to me. Um, I love this. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 back to ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. God. So, when did you so, meet God? What you that my third ayahuasca <laughs> journey. I said nine to you, and you were like, all right. I, well, I knew that there was something wrong. He's I knew on drugs. He's on drugs right now. I know. I knew something wrong. You know, he's a Why are we taking this guy seriously? I said he was an eight. Or a nine. Trevor's a ten. Trevor knows a ten. Trevor knows a ten. Yeah. Really? Yes. In person, like he, like I was with. I mean, yeah. Right, like girls are like, off, like something happens. Really? Yes. Yeah. No, I saw yeah. him speak Zulu one time, and I was like, okay. Yeah, he speaks no, so many languages. Like he's it. Zulu. Just, yeah. That, he does like the click with the. Oh, speaking. I was gonna go with the. That's clicks, another one be... called Mosa. That's oh, what that one's called. Yeah. I know the click. Mosa. Osa, yeah. Well, but you got to get like, the iPod. He sang a song with the click. It was on some British panel. His mom like, speaks amazing. it. His book, what, I hadn't read his book. I've been friends for 10 years. Read his book. I was like, I, it was great. Really? I, and I was expecting Born nothing. Born a crime. Born a crime, yes. Yeah. Um, I always talks about books. crime in a way <laughs> white people would understand. Because he like, was kind of a hustler for a couple years, ah. which I was totally surprised by. Mm. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second. I am very excited to share with you our newest partner, Public is the shit, okay? Public.com, you can go there, but public is the shit, and let me tell you why. First of all, this is where you're gonna be doing your investing online from now on, all right? And I'm gonna tell you why you're gonna do it there, because public is not like these other piece of shit companies that sell off your investing data to the highest bidder, to these other hedge funds. Now, if you don't know this, but some of these other companies that I'm contractually required to not say the names of, but I think you fucking know which ones they are, will basically allow you to make trades then before those trades go in, a fraction of a second before they go in, we'll sell that data to these hedge funds and then allow these hedge funds to make their trades before yours even get in based on your data. That's fucked up. That's cheating. That is dishonest. And you shouldn't be supporting those businesses. Okay? It's absolute bullshit. I think you should take your money away from those businesses and you should put that shit in public because public is not doing that. Okay? They're not whoring you out. Like they these keep other your info do. private. There it is. They keep your shit private. But you know what they do do? They keep a lot of public information out there. Like, for example, other investors on the app. It's almost like a social media platform. So basically, you can see the other people and what they're investing in. I would like to know what the fuck Mark Cuban is investing in. Mm. That'd be pretty nice. Would love that to. seems like a very rich guy. Oh, you're putting money in these three stocks? Well, maybe I'll do that on a Monday. Now, I'm not saying you should do that, but... Do you want to follow the moves of rich people? You might end up rich. I'm just saying. And if you have access to all these other people and information about the reasons why they're investing in these different stocks, et cetera, you will be in a much better position. I know for me, I'm fucking financially illiterate, so I'm terrified every time I'm investing in something. I would love to be able to follow successful people 
and listen to what they have to say, okay? They have a basically a clubhouse feature. We don't like to say clubhouse on here because it's an absolutely dog shit app, but they have a clubhouse feature within public that allows you to tap into these conversations, allows you to be learning about these different ideologies and philosophies when it comes to investing. There's a lot of resources that are available to you, the investor on this app already. And they're doing the right thing with your data, which is not whoring you out to the fucking highest bidder. Public.com, I'm telling you, it's the place to go. You should actually do it, okay? Get the big picture, curated themes that let you navigate the market, okay? The way that you see the world. You can invest with built-in educational features that help you learn as you go, and you invest safely with volatility reminders that call out riskier investments. If you're about to do some dumb shit, they're going to let you know. Now, if you want to do it, that's on you, but they're at least going to tap you on the shoulder and be like, what the fuck are you doing, okay? They are being honest, and I like that. They also have cryptocurrency on it, okay? They just added the crypto, so you can get in that crypto game. I know Akash is all over it, so he can do you all his it. crypto investing right there in public. So... What we're saying to you right now on this podcast is start investing with as little as $1 and you get a free slice of up to $70, a free slice of stock up to $70 when you join public.com today. Pick from nine popular stocks. They got Beyond, Disney, Peloton, Tesla, Shopify, Zoom, Apple, Amazon. And then what is this last one, David? Spy ETF. Ah, Spy ETF. What exactly is that? Ah, it's the SMP. Listen, I'm sure there's a clubhouse room you can listen to on there. It's going to explain it to you, but I'm not going to tell you because I know absolutely nothing about investing. Okay, I'm learning through public. This is the place that I'm deciding to go. Okay, so you can do that. You can get for Remember, you can get that slice of stock up to $70. Okay, when you start by investing as little as $1. But I have to tell you, you go to public.com slash flagrant to download the app and sign up. That is public.com slash flagrant. Now, this is a mandatory disclaimer. This is valid for U.S. residents 18 and up, and it's subject to account approval. See public.com slash disclosures. This is not investment advice. Now let's get back to the show. Um, anyhow, ayahuasca. Now. You refuse uh, to talk about you. No, uh, it was, it was <laughs> so my third journey. Deal, I was like, oh, I'm in the presence of uh, God right now. And you, then. First two times, nothing happened. First two times was just nice. First two times. Yeah. When do you I, take Chris? Third time? Chris, I took the first time and the my like eighth time. Okay. And hit, both of our first times were like nice. Yeah. His, my eighth time was good. His second time, his entire being exploded in front of me. And it's the one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Now, did he start saying he was retarded after this or like part no. of retarded <laughs> after this? Remember when he was doing that whole thing where he was like, he had a learning disorder. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he came out and he said he was a little he was like i'm retarded he has a, little a learning bit. disability Isn't called yeah. nonverbal learning dis disability okay well, <laughs> he just made up the end no it's not <laughs> no, it's not because i think it's last. actually it's disorder i think it's nonverbal yeah, yeah, yeah. learning disorder but yeah, i was yeah. trying to get with you yeah yeah, yeah. uh he but had he a did try to say he's retarded i don't like he didn't he didn't yeah no those were his exact words he went on cnn um that's true yeah. he just went on the breakfast club and he was like i'm i found out i'm a little retarded and yeah. and then you're that actually was his, one of the most brilliant people he's literally ever my existed. whole life i've been like guys this guy's so fucking brilliant and now he's saying he's retarded. He now out. what does that make me if i'm looking up to uh, a retard a little bit yeah a little bit uh, how do you <laughs> think full. i feel yeah and you're full i'm got i gotta be full yeah okay um <laughs> okay that's what we yeah. all are we're full. yeah yeah you retarded um, us all this you guy. made chris rock Retard. I unretarded him. <laughs> Whoa! I took him out of retard. I took him out of the jungle and brought him into the uh, the jungle Wait of retardation. <laughs> Wait a minute! Brought him, brought him, Wait a minute! And brought him to the big city. Um, the yeah. So uh, so now it's like I have a thing. I believe in God. I uh, I like have a. I like every day. I kind of just check in. I have. Um, I now believe I'll go a step further that I am a uh, spirit in a body. What I just happen to be in this body, but I'm like a endless, <laughs> in uh, this eternal soft nine spirit. body, a good body. So, I mean, a yeah. hell of a body. I no, sent he him actually. A, yeah. I sent him a picture one time. He was talking shit. Yeah, 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 you yeah, talk yeah. enough shit, I'll send you a picture. Thank you, sure. I'll I send hate you your body. Yeah. You know I'll send you a photo. Give me your number. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, He's got one picture. But, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. One morning, he yeah, I got one, skinny. Yeah, I got fucking stock photos, stock good photos of myself shredded. Uh, oil no, you were looking shredded. This is post ayahuasca. 
Uh, it was dirt. You know, it's all. I don't even know anymore. And uh, <laughs> time's uh, a construct, Andrew. Uh, I mean, yeah, exactly right. It's a flat uh, circle. So now I, so now I just am like, uh, I, I'm an, I'm a spirit in this body, and when I die, it will not be the end. You say it as if I'm gonna go. I know. <laughs> well, kind of. <laughs> well, that's how it feels. I'm used to that. Yeah, it's um, like uh, describing uh, Game of Thrones to someone who's never seen it. Yeah, it's funny. Like you, like, you know, yeah. back in the day yeah. before, it was this popular thing. You're like, yeah, there's the dragons. And, you yeah, know, yeah, but yeah. But not like, but not like that. Bad dragons. Yeah. 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 I hate dragons. But yeah, yeah. 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 No, these dragons out. are fucking, they yeah. smoke cigarettes yeah. and stuff. <laughs> They're super cool. But it was a transformative experience. Yes. And, and yes. I think you're happier. Yeah, I do too. But I, not as if you're putting it on. I just think it's like when I hung out with you and you were happy, it just kind of feels like that is... Your uh, it's main there's line. the 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 like I had like felt like I had press I felt like I had like a heavy plate on my forehead mm. that's kind of gone. Mm. Um, I it still looks like I have a migraine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's never gonna change, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. stays. That's the that. But you would just feel that just day to day before ayahuasca, just like there's just this fucking weight, right? Yeah, here. I I've stopped taking antidepressants. Really? Yeah, since I did it because you can't take them and do it. That's and, how you have to purge your body of everything, right? Yeah, you just have to, you just, they, uh, it's basically if you take ayahuasca, there's such a release of serotonin that if you, SSRIs keep serotonin in your body, if you yeah. take ayahuasca, it'll, you can over, you can uh, get something called serotonin syndrome, which is incredibly rare, but it's possible. Right. So now I uh, feel, I just feel better day to day would you recommend to someone who is chronically depressed i would recommend it to every single human being even if someone like even unless like, you're like bipolar i would recommend it and even somebody's working on making it safe for bipolar people really it's dude it is a fucking wild experience it's i can't even explain it's are you, like are you it's like, like the difference between in reading it? the bible yeah and then being noah <laughs> you're you're in you're you're in the presence of dream state eternity i mean it's like, not like, are you are you able to uh are you lucid yeah is it okay so you're lucid yeah it's you sometimes you're not but sometimes you're like you can always like get up and go to the bathroom shit like that you can always if the people that do purge the few i've only purged once out of a hand like very little yeah uh but yeah, like you're. What you're, he says, people throw up. People, yeah, they you you Take have a the, bucket, yeah, and you throw up. But the weird thing is, this sounds crazy. Is you throw up a an idea. My friend threw up his mother's hatred of him. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, I threw up the one time I did throw up an apology to the earth for pollution. I have no, you know what I mean? Like a thing that I was like, a, but but I know people that have purged up like i like feelings wait, wait hold on hold on can we go back to your yeah 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 now i'm like <laughs> well, this yeah. is the rest yeah. of it's yeah. kind of cool I mean, but this yeah. is i ain't yeah. playing this shit. was your blockage <laughs> plastic no wait, wait, yeah. <laughs> 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 you're depressed. oh so many cfcs the, in my aerosol yeah <laughs> the, yeah the bottle the turtles and so the, you threw up the apology meaning you apologize or you no longer have to apologize? No, I apologize like I just felt sorry. Uh, ayahuasca is, uh, it's uh, they say it's a woman. It's a feminine spirit that you're kind of interacting with. Yeah. And ayahuasca did it to a, my, another friend of mine where it she like showed her a bunch <laughs> of just <laughs> awful shit about like pollution and goes puke. Like, fuck you for doing this. And she went, ah. So that's so, how you apologize. Is you pollute the ground. You yeah. just throw it everywhere. <laughs> Look, it's not. A, she hasn't worked out a perfect system yet. <laughs> like into the waterway. All right, She's still, where the fish lives. <laughs> yeah, it's not a perfect system. That's it should a, be like. Can I just like make this more efficient? Burp. Can I just burp or something? This yeah. seems. Okay, uh, so then you stop trying to pollute. Well, you, no, I don't. I haven't really changed anything. It's. You said you I just eating meat. You well, said. no, I haven't eaten meat for ten years. Like I've uh, already been. So this is something this. you already felt guilty about. You kind of started caring about the environment, yeah. and that and this is not like some L.A. people have to develop things that they care about so they feel like good human beings while they watch like homeless people living in tents mm -hmm. down the block. This is a real thing. Uh, the, the apology? 
No, not the apology. Like you actually do in, care about the environmental. Like, oh yeah, I mean, as much as in America, you're kind of trapped. Yes, you're like I have the electric car. I've had electric cars yeah. for. Um, <clears throat> uh, I don't eat meat. I I buy carbon offsets when I fly. I like you know, do the Leo shit, but but like Amazon, you're, if you order from it, it's there's so many traps that. Yeah, you're gonna you're doing the best you can. Yeah, which is fine. But you know how like Leo cares about the environment, and again, I don't know the fucking guy, but I assume he's like, "What's the one issue I can care about, and then not piss off half the country into yeah. not attending my movie?" Right. Oh, the environment. All right, let's. Take I, care but of he's this been into it for since for long yeah, for but he's like forever. Sluts on private jets around the fucking world, chilling yeah. on yachts. Like his carbon footprint is massive. Of course, he doesn't really care. I know. Well, that's yeah. the problem with being. It's hard In to be an environmentalist world. and and great. Because you, you're on the these private jets, yeah, and you want to be. I mean, he probably bars. I was talking to some, like a really rich person that it's <laughs> you, like you would have premise this. What was it? Uh, is about uh like uh, I'm not uh I'm not sexist, uh, but Mother Nature. Oh, no really one's more cool. sexist than Mother yeah, Nature. Yeah, what was, what, what, was what Mother saying? Nature does to women with yeah. the bleeding and the yeah, cramps yeah, and yeah, the yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. the they're smaller than us and yeah, yeah it's awful. Yeah. Um, they got to get burnt. Like okay, but I'm but I'm sexist yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I did this to you because I said comedian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but uh, but yeah, so so the inv- I mean that's just what I got once. Yeah. I mean other times I like felt like uh like it was actually really funny like i felt connected to my mother mm. and uh i was like i have my mom's hard my I have my dad's hardware my mom's software and i told my mom like hey i did this uh basically drug and it and i found the way to hack parents approving of drugs i go uh it made me love you more Oh, and then four days later, she emails me, "Hey, can the whole family do it?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Would your mom do it? Would you take your mom? Uh... I it, she she would get her mind would get so blown. Yeah. It would. She's like on the cusp, but she's 87. So e. like, maybe just wait. Yeah, you're about yeah, to wait. see God. Yeah, wow. you're, you you want to make God give you a little. Wow. Five years. You guys are a bad <laughs> influence on me, by the way. You guys are make bringing this out of me. All this like male energy, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck the environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, listen, I'm so disgusted. I didn't realize how fucked up a statement that was. But like, you're literally looking like if this thing made me see God. Then you look yeah, at your like, own mom. My mom's not long for this world. Yeah. <laughs> What's my mom got? Best four, four or five years top. Um, Wait, so, do you think uh, about that though? Like, if your mom's got five more years, <laughs> and oh you see God. her twice a year, maybe three times a year. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna start crying if we do this meth. Don't, don't. Ten I think about it all the time. Gerard did this. This joke. Somebody did this. Like, really? where you're only gonna see your mom or dad like thirteen more times. There's oh a. Uh, there was. I, th- I saw it on like moving. a TikTok. It was like a therapy thing. And it was like about taking advantage of those. There's moments so much with your therapy on TikTok. I keep hearing. Yeah. I don't. Thanks, I get, Charla. <laughs> huh? Charla. Yeah, that's who yeah. he feeds it to he us. Made sure. Yeah, yeah, great. He made sure it's all over TikTok. Great, 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 great. That's our um, guy. But no, but and I and I thought about it like that, and I was like, wow, imagine seeing your mom thirty more times, or even seeing your mom ten total more times. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I mean, there's nothing. Time is a motherfucker, man. Yes. Like it's just like you you can't really think about it that much. Yeah. But now I believe like, oh, this is just I'll see you. You believe in an afterlife? Yeah. <clears throat> really? Yeah. I again, this is all new. Oh, so I love that. I, I want afterlife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe I in my head I have like the end of uh you know how the Matrix has like four endings? Um it's like he does a monologue like I know you're out there and then like then he's they just cut they have too many endings. Uh they when he flies away. That's okay. how I feel kind of like what's going to happen. Interesting. I'm not going to fly away. But uh I just don't I don't know. That's just what I now that's what I think based on this commune communion with the that world interconnectivity with yeah like it's all kind of one thing and the and the and the spirits and the that's what everybody seems to say like when I when I talk to the shaman when I talk to other people who've done it they they feel this sense of being like connected to something greater and I think a lot of the times it's very difficult for people that exist just in the world right now 
who are not religious to feel connected to something greater. Like it's super easy to be isolated, especially you. You don't have any kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you're existing kind of alone. Yeah. As sad as that fucking sounds. So the feeling of, of the feeling of being like rooted into something greater, that's transformative. Dude. It's better. That's all I, I'm just like, oh, this is better. Yeah. Than like atheism being like this, like, I always said I was an atheist the way like a eight year old kid is a runaway where I'm like, yeah. all right, I'm leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. trying to get God to be like, Neil, wait. I'm like, yeah, yeah. all right, I'll stay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but now I'm, yeah, now I just believe in it. And it's just as boring as anyone else's beliefs. Yeah. But at least I have like a, uh, like, yeah, I drank a thing and then now this. What about kids? You think you, maybe I don't kids think so. Are, really? Yeah. Why Never. not? I don't, I'm just not inspired to have them. Like, the ways I've been inspired to be in comedy and whatever the shit I've done in my life, like, yeah. I just, I don't know. I don't, I'm not moved by it. I'm also the, I think part of it is I'm the youngest, so I never had, like, a baby brother. You know what I mean? Yeah, I never yeah, had yeah. that mm. kind of relationship. But you have to have, like, uh, nieces and nephews. Yeah, too. I got mad nieces and nephews, actually. And you think that's, like, enough? Well, the other thing is they're not that much younger than me. Mm. Like, one of my nephews was in L.A., and I brought him to a restaurant. I'm like, this is my nephew, and everyone's like, hey. And I go, he's here on a business trip. Yeah, yeah. He's 34. <laughs> stop talking about that. Yeah, like, yeah. hey, you get out, you like L.A., do you go to Disney World? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a vendor there. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, I don't, uh, like, I don't yeah. think it's going to happen. Are okay. you doing it? Yeah. Well, I mean, I haven't you started, but, like, yeah. I'm getting married in, in December, and, it's something I've always wanted to have. I never thought I wouldn't. Uh, actually, there was a time in my life where I thought I was going to be a bachelor, and I just accepted it. Yeah, I'm I don't scared. think it's. I don't think I'm it's. Uh, I don't. I won't. If I never get married, I don't think my life will be incomplete. Well, now you're part of this bigger thing, so you can't. Right. I'm just saying, once you realize you're part of this bigger thing, you know, having children, I would imagine, I haven't had them yet, but like you start to feel like, oh my God, I'm seeing myself in my kids. Then you have this understanding of your parents that you never would have had until now, you have your own kids. That's the craziest thing. Yeah, it's like it's, kids. Chappelle yeah. one time said, it's impossible to see a baby born and be an atheist. Mm. He also has a fucking hilarious line about it, too, which was when I saw my son come out of my wife's vagina i thought man i've been using that thing all wrong <laughs> um so uh so yeah so uh i i was not gonna have kids before ayahuasca but now yeah i feel i don't i don't know i don't think that that's a person's purpose that's not my purpose yeah how um, often do you do it you still do it regularly i haven't done it in ninth like time or something yeah i haven't done it in like two and a half months how often have you done it? How many times? Uh, I thought it was something you did once, and then it's over. Like some people do. Or some it's shit, up to you. I mean, I, done. I was. I mean, some people. It's like do it every. Some people do it every six weeks. Really? Some some people have done it thousands of times. Alec, uh, the 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 uh, the shaman so, does it. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's you know ripped and beautiful, yeah. but uh, he does yeah. it every single time. He does it. Yeah, you have to like they don't drink weekend. as much, but yeah, yeah. It's um, kind of crazy. So yeah, I haven't done it in two and a half months, but but I will. I think I'll probably do it less often because mm. the I was afraid it would wear off, mm. like the sort of euphoria energy shift. It's yeah. not even euphoria; it's just better, a better spirit. Yeah, and I thought it would wear off, and it's been two and a half months, and it hasn't worn off. Amazing. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a. Um, <clears throat> I'm just curious, like, if it affects you creatively. Like, do you think that you're funnier now? I've written jokes on it that work. Really? Yeah. I thought of a hilariously bad movie idea on it, uh, which was, uh, I'm, I won't even get into how crazy I get on it, but like, but like my body shape, whatever. Um, oh, but you convulse? I don't convulse. I'll, I'll explain it now. And this is going to, this isn't going to be like, it's more like, yeah. what? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought of a movie idea, Sharks vs. Mermaids. You know what I mean? Not yeah, it's not bad. Animated something, whatever. I'm never gonna write it. That's for the kid. That's for As the streets. Animated was gonna convince us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's uh, animated. I mean, I was like, you know, it'll be a funny movie. Sharks vs. Mermaids. It's not fucking whatever. <laughs> trust me, I got better movies than that. <laughs> I, 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 I trust. Me, please, I don't have to I explain so, myself to you. This I podcast so. is over. My God. <laughs> uh, fuck you guys. Where are we supposed guys. to go? Sharks vs. Mermaids. Give him ayahuasca immediately. <laughs> <laughs> You're all piece of shit. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, also, mermaids win, right? Almost yeah, certainly. Yeah, of course they win. I mean, they got to yeah. be way I mean, smart. It doesn't look close. like they're yeah. going to, but of course they ultimately do at the end of the day. Oh, the yeah. third movie, The Avengers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. The, that's, that's the, the, the Judaism yeah. right there. Yeah. 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 And when we start doing product, uh, I mean, we can Yeah, once we start, I mean, I, I can see the merch. I'm talking to merch guy right now. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I, my, I, my, uh, my shoulder shake. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And then, like they, yeah, they shake for like four hours straight. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay, Neil. Did you ever get emotional? Like, did you oh, find yourself yeah. like weeping at any point? Yeah. Fuck yeah. I was. I've gotten. I. I. I was mourning a friend of mine so badly when I. I thought when I turned my phone on, they were gonna be dead. Wow. That's how. Like, I was like, I don't want to turn my phone on because I'm. This the only way this makes sense is if is if they actually they're do. dead. And did you connect with them afterwards? Like, yo, I had yeah, this weird yeah, experience yeah, yeah, yeah. about you. With oh, you. this is fucking really funny. So, in terms of people, so the uh, name dropping, it's me, so I have to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really um, so, uh, when me and Rock were doing it, I was like, doesn't this remind you of Erica Badu? I was like, doesn't it fucking remind And he's like, yes. He's like, I literally just thought I have to go spend time with her. Like, something about it is in that, like, just whatever Erica is, is like, uh, it's like connected to it, right? So. Hmm. I feel that way about Duval. I, I mean that sincerely. I, I know exactly what you mean. No, no, I, I, that's weird. I've never had anybody describe this before, but like every time I hang out with them, I feel like I have this experience. I felt like that way after going to Burning Man. It's not like this, like, oh my God, like my life has changed, but I feel like I have a little bit more clarity and I'm talking to someone who really understands the things that I'm saying, but also understands on a different level and I can kind of communicate them better afterwards. And that's so interesting that they're like these certain people who are like almost like organic shamans. Like they yeah, don't know oh, they're shamans. Absolutely. Wow. At like at fucking absolutely. My, every experience I've had with Badu has been like, like weird. Like, so, so, uh, and, but, but I also forget she's funny. So, yeah. I after the next day I leave her a like long voice memo going like hey I just did it da, da, da. and we had a moment at Dave's Mark Twain thing where she just I got off stage and I was like kind of emotional from it yeah yeah and she just looked at me and was like baby and it was like literally like fucking goosebumps a little yeah, bit. yeah and so I and so I leave her a voice memo like telling her thank you for that moment da, da, da. And she texts me back, wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> I call you motherfucker. <laughs> She's funny. What did That's you think point. about the backlash to uh, speaking James of Dave? Uh, <laughs> I don't. It's just a. It's a, it's like you can almost just write it up. You can just yeah. write up what's gonna happen, who's gonna say what, yeah, who's gonna. It's cause for concern, but it's never. It's just that's like the theater of it. The the. Uh, you just know what's everything is pretty like predictable outcome. Yeah, there is. Mark just finished it. Like we did a podcast last week, and then Mark just finished it. And then you brought up a really good point, Mark. And I'll let you articulate it. But about like uh, the, they're disagreeing on different things. The two communities. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah, it seemed like I I likened it to like the abortion debate. That like you have one side that's like you hate women, the other side's like you're killing kids. It's like they're not arguing on the same like what it even means to disagree so like so when it comes to yeah. the trans issue it's like one side is saying by 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 saying that gender is a biological fact right. you are making me invisible as a trans person that you're saying i don't exist and it minimizes me and my community and that's what i consider transphobic i guess is right. one side of the trans argument and then the other side is i guess like oh, I love you and I'm accepting you and I don't want you to be discriminated against and I don't want any legislation against you as a trans person, but also I think you're kind of crazy. And that's right. what it feels like with the other side is that like, I'm not going to hurt you. I don't, I'm not transphobic. I don't hate you. I'm not afraid of you. But also like, you know, come on, let's be honest. Like it's a guy and it's a girl and you're just like playing dress up or something. Or like you, trans, you have dysphoria, you have some mental disorder. Yeah, so like the trans community is basically saying, yo, if you don't think trans is real, that's transphobic. Right. And then... Everybody else, and I'm putting that in quotes, but like the majority of people are just like, I'm not transphobic. I don't want them to die. Right. I don't want them to get beat up. But do I think that it's that it's real? Or do I think they're making it up? Maybe well, this is also one up. of those things of like now we're getting. I, 
it's, it's abortion's a great analogy for it, which is you know what I realized a while ago about abortion. I it's don't fun. fucking know. Oh, I, I it is great. It's expensive. It's, it's like, not that expensive. I'll talk to you after the show. I got a guy. I got a guy. I got pills. I got a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, plan, an plan ankle B. Bracelet I got a guy. We'll I got an ankle bracelet. Plan A is um, ayahuasca. I got a for. concoction. Um, <laughs> but they, the, you. I don't fucking know. Yeah. I don't know what it, you are now a woman and you yeah. are not a woman. You're I don't fucking know. Yeah, I yeah. don't know what You got an idea. No, no, but what I'm saying <laughs> is like like abortion where it's like people go, I know when it's a life and when it isn't. Uh, How the fuck yeah, do yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I'm not yeah. saying I get the I used to do a I never did it as a joke, but I used to do a joke on the phone with Gerard, which is Abortion is kind of killing kind of a baby. Like if you're not fully ah, a baby, you ah, can't fully kill someone. Something yeah. happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's with trans stuff. I'm like, I don't know like when you officially are a man or a woman or I, like in terms of like or turf or yeah. like is a is a operated on woman the same as a I what is a the What's a woman? Do you know what I mean? Like, what yeah. is a fucking? Yeah. I don't know. Those yeah. Namibian I, chicks that have the vagina, female anatomy, but internal testes that make you yeah. give them testosterone. Yeah. What is that? Huh? Is yeah, that, like, that is a very filters, complicated like, porn search. Is what that is. <laughs> um, but some people got like three chroma or three. Uh, well, you're talking it? about the girls that were left out of the Olympics. Yeah, right? yeah, the Namibian yeah. chicks. Yeah, and it's not even their fault. Yeah, yeah, they're just really good at running. <laughs> Yeah. Because yeah. And they love MMA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is it is interesting. Like if that <laughs> if both sides are arguing different things, of course they're not gonna understand each other. So if you believe that just not believing in trans people is transphobic, right? Yeah. Of course the jokes are gonna seem like that to that community. Right. But if you're out here like, yo, I got trans friends, like everything's good. I don't hate you. Why you call me transphobic? It's cause you're not going off of their definition. Right. And that's why nobody's going to understand it. And well, that's also like it benefits both sides to not be understood. Mm-hmm. It benefits. Oh, yeah, there's a, like there's more. a victim. Yeah. Victimization is like currency. It's currency. Now. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. I'm it's it's what uh, you ever hear. Kurt Metzger has a term. It's so fucking funny. a uh, cultural flop. You know, in like uh, in the NBA, oh, like ball, the yeah. flop oh, where people yeah. are just flopping, oh, like, "Whoa, oh, did you see that rap?" <laughs> <laughs> like, fucking yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and like the NBA stopped that oh, up yeah, foul, yeah, yeah. that that Steph Curry thing. That's no longer going to be a foul. We need to bring that into the world where it's mm. like, no, it's not a foul. No contact. Yeah, wow. or there is contact, but you initiated contact. Uh, and yeah, if yeah. you if you fake and then lean in, it's not a fucking foul. Charging. So yeah. now there's people that that uh, are those people like the people who are offensive to be offensive just for well there it's sake? like there's that and or then there's also people offended. that are offended to get the yeah. sympathy yeah, energy the flop, yeah. yeah they are the they flop it's a lot of people flop it's like a soccer thing where one guy yeah. flops and another guy flops <laughs> and then and then there's a stretcher I like when they bring the stretcher out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah I don't. I, it's just not. It's predictable. Yeah, yeah. it's just entirely it's predictable. Like, uh, baked into the marketing. I'm not saying this is what Dave did, but like you've seen like certain ad campaigns use racism as marketing. Like they put out a kind of racist ad, and then of course the <laughs> internet goes crazy, and right. everybody's talking about Head and Shoulders. Everybody's talking right. about whatever yeah. detergent. Remember, I think it was like an Asian commercial where they put the black guy in the laundry machine. Right. And then, I love yeah. it. And, and then, then he, he comes, comes out, out white. He comes out white. Yeah, I love. Yeah, what's the name of the, the detergent? The, uh, yeah, what is the name of it? <laughs> um, I Bleach. Remember. No. Yeah. Don't <laughs> say it. Yeah, I, I almost did. <laughs> no, but it is. Um, I just, I just feel like it's, it's part of like the outrage marketing now. Like if you're putting out a project, and it's not pissing off. You have to find what community. It's like trying to get a book canceled so it becomes a, a, a bestseller. Yes, yeah. but, but you got to be really specific with the community because you piss off the wrong community, they'll take away your book. Right. There are certain communities where big corporations will turn a blind eye. And it kind of looks like trans, the big corporate. Like if you go at like gay, then. Well, no, there's pre- it's another Kurt Metzger. There's like protected groups. But some and are. And then some are more protected than others. Yes. Like, and it takes a while. Like, uh, certain people are not, like, like short people, fat people. You can still, like, it's like, that. Eh. Yeah. 
Damn. Fat people, I don't even think you have to. Yeah, it's like that's choice, right? <laughs> like nobody else's choice, right? But this is the this but is the, it's choice. all all of these things have like the idea come on, bro, that we feel stop, put the hamburger like or it's glandular or it's whatever like or they or they got be, they don't glandular? get good. Uh yeah, people have uh have thyroid, thyroid things issues. and whatever. Uh, also, people get didn't but have any, and the she's never been fatter. Um, <laughs> just literally just the, neck. the neck. She'd have a fucking softball. Well, that's where all neck. the food goes, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it stops right there with the thyroid. <laughs> yeah, that was the issue with the thyroid. <laughs> <laughs> you just cut um, off her yeah, fucking yeah. esophagus. Yeah. Uh, if you cut it open, it's like a slurping comes out. <laughs> um, so uh, it's disgusting. Um, the but yeah, there's all, and then there's people that like, well, they're poor. They didn't get uh, uh, nutrition. Explain to them correctly. They're in food deserts. There's yeah, like yeah. reasons for. It's oh, kind of God. all the same yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Oh. But there's all <laughs> kinds. You need of, to explain nutrition, bro. Yeah. You need yeah. to tell people that I if mean, they eat ice come cream, the fuck it's on. Bad. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Of course, but all of these things start as come the fuck on. Yes. and then you yes. go like I. Yeah, it's like I'll never call someone they, and then they show up. I'm like, hello, they. Yeah. Like I, I <laughs> have I, you done that? Uh, I don't know any they's. I'll do it if they ask, but it is uh, grammatically hard, don't you think? Yes. I said they, they ask. Yeah, there um, you go. Progress. But like it is tricky, right? It's like somebody had a really good Would they like some ice cream? Somebody had a really yeah. good argument against yeah. they, yeah. which is I'm not going to call them they cuz they're singular. They're only one person. But they feel like isn't, they're more than I one. I know. Again, that that's the, the thing. Argument? It's like I don't It's just I just respect the rules of English. Like All right. That's it. It's just really simple. Yeah. He she it that all is, But if you don't know you, if you yeah. don't know the gender, then you would use that. But not to their face, right? You would say, "What would you like?" And then yeah, yeah but then you wouldn't you wouldn't use a third person pronoun anyway. Mm. Yeah, I don't even see a real practical application. The, of the thing there. that all these things have in common, they are very boring. Yeah, <laughs> they're very boring. Yeah. So like, they don't help me either. <laughs> you know yeah, they I mean? don't. They just inconvenience. Me. Yeah, they don't benefit me in any way. So How like, can Ugh. you make it easier for me, and then I'll do it? You yeah, gotta, I just it's thing. like it's all this stuff that like it start. I none of it's very. I don't mind doing it. I guess I the thing I do mind is when if I forget or I make an honest mistake, it's bad faith interpretation. That wasn't an honest mistake. Mm. That was an aggressive mistake. That is violence. Mm. And it's like I just fucked up. I couldn't America couldn't learn metric. Yeah. <laughs> you think we're gonna learn all these fucking new yeah. gender and And I would assume most days are pretty cool with you fucking up because they're used to people fucking up. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, but it, I think yeah. there are a small number of people who want the attention and want the victim currency, the flop. who make it a big deal. Yeah. And I think the rest of they are like, Bloody majority, bro, the man, it was an honest like, mistake. Yeah, it's tricky, dude. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to make a mistake. But if we're friends for four months, you'll probably figure it out. Yeah. But the first time you talk to me, yeah, yeah it's going to be it's an vigilantes issue. on Twitter that get pissed and shit. Like or yes. like the guy who was in the store, like the the GameStop dude. Yeah. Who I think he's done a couple things. Like he's clearly out here flopping for clout. Yeah, yeah. And what what is it called? I love this term. Flopping. Flop. But like cultural, cultural flop. flopping. I think yeah. culture flopping for clout's pretty great. Yeah, he's cloud flopping. flopping. Cloud flopping. Cloud flopping, dude. Yeah. Ooh, hundred yeah. percent. Nice. We got one. it. Locked Shout it. out to Kurt Metzger. Punched up. There you go, Pert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cloud flopping. Yeah. So so beyond that, I just it's like all right. I don't. It's not yeah. it's just like cool. Yeah. In turn, and then people are like, do you? Someone was like, you need to condemn this. I'm like, no, I don't. I don't oh, fucking I agree that. with just anything. Every it. there's not you have a platform. Neil. Anyone on earth who I agree with a hundred percent. Yeah. So my mom, I, like, it, there's nobody. Yeah. So why do I need to uh, specifically? Well, everything he says, I I mean that. We share a bank account. Yeah, yeah. Me and Dave. Yeah, it's great. Also, yeah. what are you gonna say? I'm disappointed. Who, like, who yeah, cares? what am I gonna? What am? I, what's what any? What good is anything gonna do? I just no. It's you're not living in. You're not a lot of these. A lot of it seems like a lot of people just aren't living in reality. Guys, infamous tour coming to your city, Philly this weekend, sold out. Thank y'all so much. Indianapolis and Washington, D.C. next weekend. We added a second show, Washington, D.C. That's almost sold out. Only a few tickets left. Then we got San Francisco the following weekend. We added a second show there. Only a few tickets left for that one. Get on that now. Then we got Madison, Wisconsin, Chicago, the Chicago Theater, iconic. We had a second show there. Make sure you get tickets for that ASAP. Then we got Minneapolis, Fargo, Jacksonville, and then Boston for New Year's. Big announcement coming soon. Big announcement coming soon. Make sure you check it out, theandrewschultz.com for tickets. Akash, what you got? First of all, Toronto, uh, we're going to have to cancel the show this weekend. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, it was, it's a little crazy story that uh, as soon as you guys get your money back, I will trash the person that fucked you. But unfortunately, shows are postponed. Probably going to do January, February 2022. Either way, we're going to get you your money back, and we're going to do the shows again, and it will be crazy. In the meantime, October 21st through the 23rd, New Brunswick, New Jersey at the Stress Factory. Come through, guys. I'm filming my special there, the third part of my special. Uh, November 6th, Atlanta. We're at the Red Clay Comedy Festival. Tickets are already selling quickly, so hurry up and cop. December 9th through 11th, we're going to be at D.C. at the Comedy Loft. January 7th through January 8th, I'm coming back home to Dallas in Hyenas Comedy Club. And February 3rd and 4th, we're going to be in Richmond, Virginia at the Sandman Comedy Club. Get your tickets at AkashSing.com. And Alex. guys, if you have a podcast, you want to step things up. If you live in the tri-state area, head over to WTFMediaStudios.com. <laughs> Miles is in the shot. Hey, Miles. <laughs> and um, yeah, head over to WTFMediaStudios.com and book a session with me today. And with Wheezy, you can get a consult with one of us. And now let's get back to the show. What up, everybody? We're going to take a break for a second because it's gambling time. And if you're going to gamble, you might as well make the most money while you're doing it. And I'll tell you one way you can make money. When your initial deposit bonus is matched. Think about that. That is free extra money for you to gamble with. And now you just make even more. Okay? Mm. It's unbelievable the deal that they're giving. They're matching your initial deposit bonus at mybookie.ag. Up to $1,000. Think about that right there. All you got to do is use the promo code flagrant. Matching up to $1,000, promo code flagrant. You go do that right now. What can you gamble on? Shit. My book is the only sports book that offers online super contests, so you can't miss out on this exclusive promotion. Enter now and turn $10 into $10. Thousand weeks five through eight, make five picks against the spread, get them right, earn points, and rise up the standings. Take home the ten thousand dollar grand prize. You think you're nice at picking them? Go do it with my bookie, mybookie.ag. Promo code flagrant. You bet, you win. I hope. Make, make sure you do it right now. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere. My bookie. Let's get back to the show. You know what's funny though is like we're going back to the Kim K monologue, uh, which was exceptional, is that. There were trans jokes in it. I guess one trans joke or something. Like that. Uh, a Caitlyn. Yeah, maybe it was a Caitlyn joke. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it was like, and she has the authority to make the joke even though she's not part of the community because of proximity to the community. Like nobody said anything. Nobody asked Caitlyn if it was okay. Right. But because of her perceived proximity, like nobody knows if like she hates fucking trans people. But they're like, right. no, it's her mom, dad. So she's allowed to make the jokes. Is she? Uh, well, that's because Dave's argument was like, "Yo, I had a friend, right? Right? So she's like, I got a mom, dad, right? So does that <laughs> allow her to do the joke? Um, I it it looks like she's gotten away with it, <laughs> she, and nobody said a single thing. Now no. it was sweet and it was kind of cute, and yeah. Dave's stuff seemed like it was like, this is how I feel, right? And here's a joke that goes along with it. it. Seemed a bit pointed, yeah. It seemed, but I I actually feel like if it was less, um, uh. If he, yeah, yeah. If it's less honest, like if he cared less about like making the point, it was almost like comedy was a tool to drive home the actual point instead of like here's a random joke about trans people. Here's a random joke about parks. Yeah, I think Kim was in some ways just saying words. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Like just like words, 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 words. Laugh. Words, 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 words. My husband is a bad personality. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I hope Kanye makes a, a diss song about her because oh. it's like way worse than anything Edison, any SNL has done. Did you notice, though, that like she made sure to say the things that he that would he's really genius. care yeah, yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like to get a, he's yeah. the richest yeah. black man in America, which yeah. is not even true. Uh, who is? Another guy. Oh. <laughs> no, no. There's Byron a, Allen. Byron Bob, Allen. <laughs> no, Bob Johnson, the guy with the Bob Johnson, yeah, probably. Yeah. You know, there's like a few other, but uh but still like she said all the things He's that would definitely Yeah, he, she knew ego. like you can say this if you also say, say this. Say my personality shit as long as you say I'm really rich yeah. and I'm a genius. Yeah. And, and I think she yeah. said greatest rapper she of all said time. best rapper of yeah. all time and all of us were like Yeah. Uh that. he's not the be I would argue he is not the best rhymer of all time but he is the best hip-hop musician all in of all time Ooh. that's fair yeah i like that take if you're including producing the music yeah of, co of he's course he's competing with who who else jay Timberland? cole jay dilla yeah like there's yeah. a few people Timberl that do it Tim yeah timberland and and pharrell dr and, dre dr dre like pharrell, guys yeah, that, guys that, that didn't write 
our guys that did, I mean, Pharrell writes a little bit, but like, yeah. but didn't really, don't have their, don't have many of their own albums. Yeah, he's amazing. But that guy's, Kanye's fucking unbelievable as a musician. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And like, I learned that like three weeks ago. Yeah, I just found that out. <laughs> what do you mean? I never, I never felt that way. Oh, you didn't, you just didn't care for it? The bars are trash to me. Like I do think they've gotten weaker. The oh, they've definitely gotten weaker. But like he's got a song in this album, Hurricane, the yeah. the one with the weekend, and his bars are fucking great. Mm -hmm. I'll give you one for album. My feeling is Those he's three. He's at his most authentic three? when he's complaining about women, right, fair. and I think that he does have like like uh, women issues. And all of a sudden, the bars are like really true and real. And then when he talks about pretty much anything hurricanes else, about about women. Well, there you yeah, go. Yeah. But, all, but he was good stuff, about the early stuff when he was complaining about women, like it was real, and you could tell that this guy was going through it, and these were real experiences he yeah. had. And then all of a sudden, he's trying to like change the world and shit, like activist Kanye. It's like Dark Beautiful Fantasy is maybe my favorite album ever, really? uh, on any yeah. genre. Yeah, it's a great album. Mm -hmm. it's sad. It's weird. It's like it's great. Mm. All right, fine. So maybe I'm a little bit off there, but I think the <laughs> I mean are... whatever. You don't have to agree with me. Yeah. Um, did you see the fight? I didn't see. I didn't see it. Even a, I didn't even see a frame of it, bro. Wow. I saw a replay. It was, People really loved the even fight. Even knowing huh? the mm -hmm. ending, I was like, "This is fucking." It is it just like they were just throwing haymakers and not falling? You don't see heavyweights do this. Yeah, you don't see heavyweights do this because usually, especially with heavyweight boxers, usually they never start young. I mean, even Deontay Wilder, right? I think he was played 19? football maybe or something like that, and then he started boxing started when 19, he was a little bit older. That. Yeah. So I mean, if you're big and you live in America, yeah, like you're not choosing boxing. No. There are other sports you can make way more money, have a much easier life. Yes. Right? So Tyson Fury comes from a legit boxing family. Like yeah. a dynasty. Named have a after dynasty. Mike Tyson. Named after Mike Tyson by his father. <laughs> I love is that I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 Well, that's yeah, hilarious. Yeah. You know, ASAP Rocky's named after Rock Him. No. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, this is it. Okay. So you decide what your kid's gonna be before he's yeah. Old enough to decide for himself. Well, yeah. And then I it mean, works out. Yeah. A lot of rappers, a lot of people were named after rappers. He's just happens to be good at rap. <laughs> so, so they go and they fight. And um, this is the trilogy fight. And everybody, th myself included, thought Tyson Fury was just going to walk all over him. Like, just because it's tr a trilogy fight fit. the way Dave and trans people is a trilogy fight. Yes. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> That's good. Last time I'm fighting this dude, yeah. this is it. Haymakers <laughs> back and forth. You know what I mean? 100%. So, uh, yeah. So when they, the trans person kissed Dave at the weigh-in, I knew that was going to be oh, serious. I was like, he is not going to take this well at all. <laughs> Go ahead. So, so they're basically in there, and uh, Deontay comes a little bit more prepared for this one, and they were fucking slugging. Away. We're talking about like 240. I think Deontay was 245, and then Tyson was 277. This is a lot of weight. This is heavyweight division. One punch, you go down. That's it. That's yeah. why it's interesting. It's like the lighter guys are fun to watch because they're so skilled and they're running around. But at the end of the day, it's like they can just pound on each other's heads. It's rare right. that you're going to get these big knockouts. Manny Pacquiao was so exciting because here's this little guy that could actually pack a punch. Yeah. Right? Like you guys can't remember last time Floyd knocked someone out. Do you ever, watch, do you ever go to a Floyd fight? Yeah. Floyd. It was like watching a guy in fast forward and the other person's in, in normal regular speed. it was yeah, like yeah, yeah. oh this is just not fair yeah 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 it was amazing. so great i saw floyd canelo live it was fucking unreal but anyway so they start fighting and they're swinging and uh it looks like tyson is gonna kind of start bullying wilder and then wilder catches him with a really short right hand and drops him and then drops him again at the end of the round. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden you're like, holy shit. Right. And like, then, I don't even know what's happening. Know what's happen. yeah. And then the rest of the fight, even though Fury is starting to come on and starting to outbox him and starting to bully him, you know that all it takes is one shot. The sure. guy already went down. So for 11 rounds, it's just this scintillating nonstop action from heavyweights. You never see yeah. it from heavyweights. And, and then Fury knocks him out in just like this amazingly... Uh, beautiful. I think he dips under, hits him with like an overhand right, finishes him. They stop the fight. Deontay Wilder shows so much fucking heart. Like both Bruh. guys leave the fight beloved. Yeah. Everybody yeah. who watched it was like, yo, both of y'all, if you ever fight again, I will watch you guys fight again. The worst part of the whole fight is that uh, Deontay didn't want to shake his hand afterwards. Like, Why? He, he was just like ego on probably. Some shit, yeah. Some they had beef shit. after the other fights. Like he he accused him of cheating and like yeah. Using Deontay's been a sore loser. And he's a sore loser. That's it. He's he's a he's sort of. He never mentions the fact that you're not in shape. He never says <laughs> I don't <laughs> like I don't like getting beat shape. up by a guy who's not a, a guy yeah. who who's a, who works for uh, for UPS. <laughs> we, we do live in an interesting time though. Like uh, I was talking to my girl's dad about this, but like we're like Tom Brady and Tyson Fury. Yeah. 
Like, there's not a single abdominal muscle between the two of them. Yeah. And these are the most dominant people in their respective sports. Yeah. And I'm watching this fucking fight. And I, get, and I asked that probably on, like, Twitter or Instagram. But I'm just like... Who was I talking... There's a guy in the NBA. Uh, he played for Milwaukee and Chicago. Jabari Parker. Yeah, yeah, Parker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. he just has, like... He's a little puff. Yeah. Like, doughy. But you know what that is. And no, no, no. No, I He's was. Mormon, I right? said somebody. Uh, no, that's why I, I was He's, like, I'm pretty sure "Why is he in bad shape?" And they go, "That guy eats perfectly, really, and he can't. He just has a soft looking body. He doesn't. He's not on the sauce. No, usually guys like that in the yeah, league, of course, they're on the sauce. Yeah, but interesting. Yeah, and he some guys had, just can't get. They're just dope. Like Will Ferrell can run marathons. And he Will Ferrell, like and that. he just is doughy. And some people nah, just got bad bodies. Bro. You're off the bread. You'll be good. I really believe that. You say right. you'll be fucking good. All right, cool. Anyway, I'm I'm literally watching this fight and I'm like, <laughs> what? what? You stay off carbs, you'll be good. Jabari Parker, that's your problem. Yeah. Yo, if you yeah, if you're carbs, listening, Jabari Parker. Yeah. If he gets I bet off he, carbs. I, from what I hear, he's off carbs. No. Nah. No way. Okay. You think Tom Brady's on the carbs? Tom Brady's on carbs. He's not on carbs. So he's he's the fucking cleanest like, person. Have you seen like, Tom Brady? He's like a tiny fucking. He eats avocados. Have you seen him without <laughs> a shirt on? Cream. Say what? Have you seen him without a shirt yeah. on? This is like a guy who's about to fold under questioning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like a guy who's like, no, the away. cops, yeah, bring the cops in. I'll talk <laughs> yeah. to them. What? No. Yeah, I saw the picture. Where'd you see it? No, I don't remember. <laughs> um, where, uh, Tom Brady, I think, is like in, for his age, is in very good shape. For his age, yeah, he's in great shape. But he's also the greatest football player in history. And he's never had an amazing physique. Right. Just like Tyson Fury. Right. Well, that's the thing where I think if you're, I think now... Just because it's like you look at like Johnny Unitas. Those guys didn't know about nutrition. Yeah. And they had day jobs. Don't worry. Don't look at that. Day jobs. But they these guys can just be about no black working guys, out. Yeah. You ever watch? Uh, uh, I was just there's a picture of Len Dawson. Sorry. In like halftime of the Super Bowl, the championship or something smoking like that. Smoking a cigarette. Smoking a cigarette, yeah. drinking a beer yeah. at halftime. Blows yeah, my dude. fucking Hank mind. Aaron used to smoke cigarettes in the dugout. Baseball makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. They still do tobacco yeah. to this day. You could do other things <laughs> yeah, while true. you play baseball. Yeah. But football is wild. It's wild. Yeah. And anyway. a quarterback sauced up, making reads. That's yeah. going to be the crazy. future of the combine. They're going to be looking for fat guys, 100%. Yeah. They're going to see some guy be like, yeah, too many abs. <laughs> it's the now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it's some positions. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm watching Tyson Fury fight and I'm like, who could beat this guy? And then I started thinking, like, historically, who could beat him? I think Tyson Fury is the greatest heavyweight boxer of all time. Stop. I, I, Stop. Everybody guffaws when I say it. Stop. Just tell me the guy that can beat him. Yeah, but if you're, you're also telling me 50 years real in quick. The future. Six foot nine inch Tyson Fury. He does look. He's fucking huge. He's going to get beaten by five foot ten inch Mike Tyson. Muhammad, you're out of your mind. Muhammad, Muhammad out? Ali. Muhammad Ali, what? Six one. George six, Foreman. Three. Six three and what did the top? What did he weigh? Two hundred twenty pounds at his top. He was probably hovering around two hundred eight to eleven when he was fighting. Like two seventy seven. George Foreman is closest. Six four. But if Ali is outboxing, if Ali is outboxing George Foreman, imagine what's going to happen when a guy six nine is in front of him with great foot movement, fast hands. The, the only person I can think of is Lennox Lewis because Lennox. I was going to pitch him. Now, here's the thing. He's if, just because he was huge. Because he was big. He's tall. He had great reach and great power. But here's the thing. He also if, gave one of my favorite interviews after a fight where he, he it's like, he I think he lost, and but the British accent, he was like, did he even throw one jab? <laughs> it was so He's fucking fully funny. fully Canadian. But, yeah. No, yeah, I, he yeah. just chose to use the British accent. He went Madonna. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But the point is, I'm watching, and I'm like, if Lennox Lewis is the only guy that can beat Tyson Fury, right? Nobody considers Lennox Lewis the greatest heavyweight of all time. Yeah. Yeah, but this is what I was saying last week or on Patreon Tyson's or something. The it just mm -hmm. moves forward. Like, if you put Giannis, he's not the greatest basketball player of all time, but if you drop him in the 60s, they're not going to know what the fuck this thing is mm. because everything just moves forward. Yeah, yeah. People get better at their respective People get better. At, forms, they yeah. get bigger. They get faster. They get stronger. Everything. They just somehow, as time passes, we just get more and more dynamic at everything. Yeah. So Tyson might be able to beat any heavyweight going back, but that doesn't make them the greatest heavyweight ever. Yeah. You got to put them in their time and consider them in well, their time. And wow. Just to that point, real quick. Okay, okay. Just to that point. If things get better as we go along, yeah. we're currently, according to that argument, in the best, right? Yes. Because things are getting better. And if this is the best guy of now, which is the best version of the sport, he's the best ever. 
According yeah, to your you argument. use greatest is where I tripped up. The first time he said he's the greatest heavyweight ever, I think great is a little different. Best, sure, he might be able to beat any of these guys because of the era we're in. And 20 years from now, there'll be a lot of people who could beat the shit out of this guy. That's just how time But we're not there. But if we're talking great relative to your time, I don't know boxing, but I'm assuming it's going to be an Ali who fought F Foreman and Frazier and Liston and whoever else, mm -hmm. as opposed to Tyson Fury, yeah, who Frazier fought Wilder. Frazier feels like he can knock him out it. with like a fucking hard. Frazier was five ten. There's, I he, agree. He wouldn't even touch him. Yeah, but yeah. think about it. Wilder was touching Fury, and Wilder's not a great boxer. Yo, he's just a slugger. If you put Ali in front of him, yes, he's shorter, but he's an actual boxer and can touch. So let him. me give a little pushback yeah. about that. So Deontay Wilder is six seven. What a lot of people don't realize about Deontay Wilder is like. What he lacks in skills, he makes up uh, for in the fact that he's the hardest puncher in the history of boxing. He mm -hmm. had 42 fights before that fight, and 41 ended in knockout. That's the highest knockout percentage in history. He's the hardest puncher in history. Nobody's close, probably, mm -hmm. right? So when you're 6'7", you can have kind of shitty fundamentals because you're so much taller than people you're fighting. They have to take risks in order to hit you. And the second they take those risks, boom, game over. He goes up against a guy 6'9", who could actually keep him out there, and he still fights him well. It's like... I, I'm telling you, I don't see anybody. In, I know this sounds blasphemous, but including I, you're not Ali that beating. wrong. If yeah. you're not, I know what you mean. I see your point. Yeah, Th there's just physics here. It's like, yeah. who's gonna touch him? Yeah. If and everybody goes Lennox, and I think that's reasonable. But if we're going Lennox as the only guy, but Lennox also wasn't like dominant. He was like the champ, but he wasn't like he got beat. God damn! It yeah. wasn't like he murdered people. Yeah. Um. I mean, yeah. I don't know. He got. I just think I know it's crazy to say. But if you really sit down and look at it, and you're like, who could be? Could Mike Tyson beat him? There's no way in hell. There's no way. In, I don't even know if he could reach him. He could literally just stand up straight in front of him. I don't even know if Mike is reaching him with the punches. Yeah, but Mike would get close. Like Mike's styles. And I'm do what? going like this. I'm going to take some hits while I'm getting close to you. And once I'm close, now I'm, I'm bodying you. I'm taking you to the body Good and I'm going up close to with that big old jab. Yeah, I'm telling nine, you, he would just run work. through that shit. He just walks in nah. like this, just takes punches. I'm telling you, Mike could do it, and I think Ali would be able to do it. Nah, bro. Because Ali could take a lot of punishment. Ali and could still, take the punishment. Yeah. But how, clo how close is he to Deontay Wilder? Who? Tyson Fury. Close is he in terms of what? In terms of skill, in terms of... I think he's significantly better. Yeah. But skill Deontay's he. got the equalizer, which is the power. If he touches you, you go down. Mm. There's nothing you could do. Turns it off. It's so, so funny how unpopular it is. What? Like, heavyweights used to be the only, the only game in town. And now I'm like, who? Yeah. Sad, I, like, right? when you talk about it, I'm like, is that the big fat guy? Is that yeah. the big like, <laughs> guy? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Are you I, in MMA at all? Are you getting into Not that? even a little. Really? Too, it's actually too violent for me. Interesting. My dad so, says the same thing. And he's was, a huge boxing fan. I was yeah. watching boxing this time. Them two, I was like, this is too, this is like, these guys are all getting concussions. It's crazy you get a concussion. Then you get back up and you keep fighting. Yeah. And you just, a couple rounds in, you're back to, hopefully so that, back to normal. That's the thing with MMA is like people think MMA is way more brutal because you hit someone when they're on the ground. Right. Right. But the reality is letting somebody get back up after they were concussed. Yeah. And keep fighting. Yes. Even while their knees are still wobbling. That's is a brutal. Is a war crime. It's insane. Yeah, it's a fucking war yeah, crime. It's torture. Yeah. It's insane that we allow that, right? Yeah. So it's actually apparently way worse for you boxing. Well, because you get damage. hit so much more. Yeah. Sustained punishment. I football is kind of too violent for me so, now. They say that boxing and football is the same thing. It's like that constant, yeah. like you're just knocking yeah. it constantly. Whereas MMA, it's like one big shot, lights out, ref jumps in there. Yeah. You're taking less punishment. It's mostly getting split. Career. You're like bleeding a lot more. Yeah. And yeah. also, there's more cost to punish. I also someone. don't, be honest, I don't you like hurt. your hand hurts. Yeah. I don't like the barefoot thing. I don't want to see foot. feet. I don't want to see feet. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to, you fucked up bare knuckle. Nah. You never heard of barefoot feet. boxing? Barefoot boxing. Yeah, it's really popular. It's getting really popular. You don't like seeing the feet. Nah. Dude, there was a gnarly thing that happened in this fight. This guy kicks a guy in the face, right? Ugh. He does like an up kick, kicks a guy in the face, breaks his big toe when he uh -huh. does it, right? Oh gosh. He, he goes back down to like plant his feet. Yeah. No, 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 and no, no, no. this, I assume that's the big toe. This big toe is just pointing up, uh -huh. right? And as he's looking at the other guy, he looks down at it, takes his other foot, just pushes the, the big yeah. toe back down onto the canvas, uh, keeps on fighting. That's called toe, cartoon toes aren't logic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, what would Daffy Duck do? <laughs> <laughs> he would, I think he'd step on his own fucking broken toe. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yo, yeah, su giant surprisingly, surprisingly, toes aren't that big of a deal. Like I, when I used to do karate, I broke three toes. 
like kicking and shit like that. There's and you can just keep I broke going. Both like it doesn't hurt that much. It doesn't feet. mess up your balance that much. Really? Yeah. There's, if there's nothing, there's also <laughs> nothing they can do. Big toes. Oh yeah, like they, they just fucked. say don't walk on it or some shit. Yeah, they can't put it in a cast. Yeah. If you break your big toe, I would think you're fucked. I would too. It's not that bad. Apparently, you can just step on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you try stepping on it now? <laughs> yeah, I did. I didn't try it. I should have tried. tried. Yeah, 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 I just I so waited till after. Yeah. In like competition. In competition. And just yeah. kept going. Just kept going. Adrenaline, you don't feel it, and then afterwards, it hurts a little bit, but it doesn't hurt that much. Huh. Which toe? It, Which toe? It, it was different ones. So one time it was a big toe, and then the other time it was a pinky, and then yeah. Yo, sorry. A couple I'm, questions I had about the Wilder fight. I yeah. saw the replay. First of all, Wilder looked like a better boxer this time. Like yeah. he looked. Yeah. Usually, I watch him. He just looks crazy. Yeah. Also, here's one question. Fury would put Wilder in this headlock a lot, and the ref would always break it up. Yeah, yeah. Fury's first knockdown of Wilder, he popped him, uh, got him once, then put him in headlock, then yeah, uppercutted yeah. him. It's a classic uh, yeah, dirty move. Nice That's dirty like, boxing. That's uh, yeah. like using the, the arm hook in basketball to drive. It's yeah. like kind of dirty, but you get, yeah. everybody does it. Okay. You use this hand, or what depends, whatever, but you use one hand to kind of hold their head down, yeah. and then you uppercut with the other. But if you're really good, you keep the ref on the hand holding side. Mm -hmm. So if the ref is right here, you just put the hand here and then you uppercut with the left okay. so the ref can't see you. Because the ref would be like, hey, that's illegal. You can't hold his head yeah. down and punch him yeah. right at the same time. But yeah, he, this is a guy like, the Furies have been fighting since they're four years old. They're, they're gypsies. Like, yeah. Like the legit gypsies. Like not like we're playing around for this for like the title. He looks like he trains only outside. He <laughs> has a Winnebago. Yeah. It doesn't like, surprise me multiple, in the slightest. That they go live in sometimes. Yep, yeah. doesn't surprise me in the slightest. That's the life. That they call yeah. them the travelers or yeah, something travelers, like that because yeah. you're not supposed to use gypsy. And he just said, uh, well, no, I'm going to use gypsy. And he's <laughs> also the baddest guy on the planet. So yeah. it's like, I guess you can just use that <laughs> if you want. But like that is the fucking life. And they fight. They're called like fighting men. And yeah. it, it could be in a field on some like Brad Pitt and Lockstock shit. Was uh -huh. it Lockstock or just yeah, Snatch? Yeah, Snatch. Snatch probably. Yeah, don't yeah. know. Snatch. But like... But yeah, of course, man. It's rare. You're never going to get that. A guy 6'9 in America is playing basketball or football, and he would never be brought to a boxing gym. Out of his mind if he was brought to you a boxing gym. You talk about head movement height. sometimes with boxers. I notice it with Fury. Oh, yeah. It's fucking crisp, dude. Just in and out. Slip, 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 yeah. bang. It's When crazy. he knocked him out, he dipped a fucking yeah. punch. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Caught him with an overhand mm -hmm. right. Yeah, it's that, unbelievable. It really is the difference of doing something your whole life and getting into something kind of later and like That's... figuring it out, even though one is like an elite athlete and the other one's just sort of like a massive guy. Yeah. You could, I you went to the Triple G guys, yeah. Um, yeah. Canelo, Canelo fight. Oh, dude! And I was which one? The they had a trilogy. The too, second right? one. Second one. And I was I was front row, and uh, at one point um, they're like they're eight feet from me, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And at one point, uh, Canelo punched Triple G. This. This and he didn't blink. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, this, these guys, this is some other shit. Bro, they're my, uh, the guy that I train with, right? He used to be on the Egyptian Olympic team, right? And he's won a bunch of like uh, world titles and that kind of stuff. This is in uh, amateur. Uh, Hossam Abdin, great trainer. You should go train with him in New York. But uh, he said they used to do a drill where they would take a glove, not in a hand, but just a glove outside of a hand, and you'd leave your eyes open, huh? and they would just punch you in the face with the, not with your hand in the glove, but yeah, just yeah, holding but it like just that. Just like getting used to. Just to, so you get yeah. used to not blinking while a punch is coming at your face. Yeah, hmm. the most basic human instinct there it's is. The, yeah. And they, they beat it. Yeah. yeah, it was like, oh, okay. All right, go ahead. I think that's what fighting. freaked us out. I remember when Matt Barnes put the ball right in Kobe's yep. face, yeah. and Kobe didn't even blink. Mm. The craziest shit ever. Yeah. I heard there's an angle where it's off to the it's, side. Don't but watch it. It's I refuse to believe that. <laughs> it's heartbreak. There's no. another angle of that exact thing that happens, and he comes nowhere near Kobe's face. But the way it looks like Yeah, no, 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 it's not Stop, stop, stop. Don't Google it. That's not Mama Mentality. That's not Don't even talk about it. Cut it out. Edit that. We can't edit it out there. Scrub it. <laughs> but uh, I, we believe that about Kobe. You can train yourself to just not fucking blink yeah. when a basketball is throwing an inch from your face or whatever. I did a couple yeah. commercials with Kobe, and the funniest shit about uh, I did a Nike commercial and a uh, 2K, I think. But if Kobe, if they wanted, if you wanted Kobe to be in the commercial, he'd go, "Yeah, I'll be in it," but you got to shoot it within ten minutes of my house. Hmm. So he's not wasting time. He's like, he's yeah, not I'm not fucking time. going to you. Yeah. But if you want to come, if I'm like getting my dry cleaning, I'll stop by. Yeah. And I'll do your fucking dumb commercial. Because what are you gonna do? Make me more famous? Right. He, they already, all those guys already got the money from Nike, so they're like, 
What's like going to sue him for breach? Yeah. In the fourteenth year of their de- Jordan, the funniest is Jordan does it, and it's Jordan <laughs> for his own <laughs> brand. Yeah. When was the last time you saw Michael Jordan in a Jordan commercial? Yo, I can't I, remember. I, I know. I, I know when you did, and I can tell you how much time they had to shoot him. Jeter commercial. This. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Forty-five minutes. Come to the golf course. Get the fuck wow. out of here. Yeah. Like, just come to the golf. That's the, the, it wow. used to be like in the old days with like those like Johnny Unitas guys, they'd make them come. They, you come to set, you're here for 12 hours. Yeah. And then a guy named Joe Pitka directed all Michael Jordan's commercials besides the Jordan, besides the Spike ones. And he would get them in and in and out in three hours. And that changed the game. And that became. Every, you get people for three hours now. I'm not even trying to make a joke. Those guys are like, like Kobe built the helicopter because he was like, I'm not wasting fucking time. I'm not. Wa- it, <laughs> yeah. You just get to the point where like, this is, I'm sitting in traffic right now Power, and yeah. it's Especially costing LA, me money. No. Yeah. 10 minutes from my house or I, I, I will take the fucking helicopter. I don't want to take it. That's like, he was, that was his mindset. Yeah. That's why he built it. I'm just, I think that's how we get to He built the helicopter? Or that's why he got the helicopter. Because that might explain <laughs> something. Yeah. yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a moment of mentality. There's limits. Yeah, you know, he looked up, up instructions. <laughs> I mean, at a certain point, like Kobe, you can't do everything. Engineering, physics. Yeah, um, yeah like. So, wait, you, what happened with Kobe uh, when you guys did the commercial? Good to work with. He, uh, we had no, almost no interaction. Really? Uh, I either thought sometimes I would get paranoid and be like, he must think I was racist to Dave or something. <laughs> I would just get like paranoid, like what? But meanwhile, they just don't. He's like, who's Dave? Exactly. Yeah. No, well, that, no, he yeah. did do a thing that was crazy. It was when he had his right arm hurt. Uh, he had the shoulder injury. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. he rotator cuff. Yeah, he was. Right. It was. He did a underhanded shot from half court. Uh-huh. Hit the rim, left hand. Left I was hand. like, yeah, that's some other shit. <laughs> He's, yeah, he can. That's some other shit. Like that's. I can't. I don't know anyone that can do that. Is that a real fear? Like, are you worried that people would think, people that aren't exactly familiar with who you are, that yeah. they could think? It, it used to be worse, but like now it's. Yeah, were, you, pe- were you blamed for that? Uh, for being racist? Uh, it was all too hazy. Uh, it was all a little hazy, so it was like, ah. Uh, some racist shit happened, and there was some white happened. guy there. You were the only white person on duty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, ah. Uh, you have no alibi. Like, yeah, I'm white, yeah. and I was there. Yeah, I was there. Because <laughs> that, yeah, that's tricky. You're walking through life, and every person you interact with, you don't know you, if you have to explain yourself or not. I have a picture yeah. of meeting the Obamas, and Barack is excited to meet me, and Michelle's like, <laughs> oh, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Michelle's like, real I one. I have now. the photo. <laughs> Barack's like, black people be tripping yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just go to Africa. You know what I mean? Black people just leave and go hey, to Africa. Find my father up yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Michelle's wow. like, literally, like, people are like, Michelle seems mad. I'm like, yeah, she does, doesn't she? Really? I don't, again, I don't know. It's paranoid. Yeah. It's like, I'm just, I don't know. So I don't know what, um, but that Nike shit was great because it was like, Richard Sherman and fucking Kobe and Serena and like yeah. literally nine days of shooting. Really? In the war. It was f- the best. And you don't mind dealing with athletes? All right, guys, we need to take a break for a second because with today's low interest rates, it's a great time to refinance your student loans. All right? Ernest offers low rate student loan refinancing and you can check your rate risk free in just two minutes. With Ernest, you get radically flexible payments and you can pick your loan term. By refinancing, you can reduce your loan term, save money, or combine multiple loans into a simple monthly payment. And. If you have questions, you can even talk to a real live human at Ernest for help. So, isn't it time you stop feeling overwhelmed by your student debt? Ernest is offering our listeners a $100 cash bonus. Refinance your student debt at earnest.com slash flagrant. Remember, terms and conditions apply. Now, Ernest is giving our listeners a $100 bonus. Refinance your student loans at earnest.com slash flagrant. Remember, Say it again. What? Say it again. Terms and conditions apply. 
okay? Once again, you get a $100 cash bonus when you visit earnest.com slash flagrant to refinance your student loan. Not available in all states. Terms and conditions apply. I think they want us to say it one more time. One more time. Visit earnest.com slash flagrant for more details. Terms and conditions apply. Earnest student loan refinancing made by Earnest Operations LLC. NMLS number 1204917. California financing law license number 605 Four seven eight eight five three five Mission Street, San Francisco, California nine four one zero five. Visit earnest.com slash licenses for a full list of licenses. Now let's get back to the show. And you don't mind dealing with athletes? No, because here you want to with like directing, directing. You have to be like, you know, you come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here are my directions on that. Faster. <laughs> yeah, hmm. yeah, Literally, yeah. just like fast, just run faster. Yeah. Oh, this is very funny. So when you when you do like a, for instance, Nike commercial we would audition people for how they ran. So we were doing exterior running shots and we had 10 people and we go, all right, run. And then we go like, nah. people, you can't have a bad runner yeah, you got in a, a commercial. You can't like, yeah. yeah, she can be great or he can be great looking. And like, if they just, I do it now when I go to like West side highway or somewhere, I'm like, nah, nah, can't use them. Don't have <laughs> it. He's struggling. He doesn't. He doesn't like his head moves weird. But I mean, that is that, true. That's, that's worse than getting called a six. Honestly, and getting <laughs> yeah. told that you run weird. Fuck. <laughs> no, you can't. Yeah, stop it. Um, I'm so, just thinking maybe it's different for you though, also because like you're you're not going into this shoot as like some fucking director that none of them have ever heard of. That's They're probably that's familiar the other thing. with yeah, you. Yeah, that's or, the other like, thing. Within one person like there's yeah. one degree of separation you're like oh yeah i was talking to blah 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 yeah, yeah, knows yeah. you you're a comedian so and then a lot of them like grew up watching spell show so they're like right, 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 right. like i went to blake's house one time yeah. griffin half baked was on his living room table and i was like dude uh, you gotta play it you gotta be a little cooler yeah. like you're kind of blowing this right <laughs> yeah. here, like this is not that's a little too much. like you gotta i well, get it it's it there, a cool it's exciting to meet me i get all that but <laughs> yeah. you know bring it down a little yeah. bit uh yeah that's good when they're like when they were younger, and then now they're like, fucking white Neil. <laughs> <laughs> white Neil. <laughs> a post and black Neil. Well, just that. I was white Neil for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you got it. You ever want to do it again? Not Chappelle show, but like. No, I don't. You. I, you did. I always a, try you, to bring you. In. I always. No, no, but you didn't. You did an hour long television show. Oh, how god. was it? Oh god. Was so it fun? Hard. Was it? So how was your hard. life? Uh, we <laughs> didn't have a life. No kidding. Yeah. Like, it's not, it's like, this is too hard. But is there ever, ever a part of you that's like, okay, I want to create another thing that captures cultural sentiment. Like, that's what excited me about the show that we made, right? Is like, it felt like every week we were doing something. And it was before we did Netflix. When we were right. doing it weekly on Instagram, I was like, oh, every week we tapped into the conversation right. and had like something really interesting, fun and like thoughtful about it. And it was really exciting. And you got to experience that like every week it was tuning in and people were reacting. Imagine there was social media. Imagine there was social media. It's the media. last show I remember that you stopped down at that time right? and watched it. So yeah. isn't there, is there a part of you now? No, uh, no. no, no I, they're just, I'd rather just do stand up and do, I don't, I was telling somebody earlier, it's too hard. Yeah. It's too hard. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. if you have like a group of dudes that you love doing it with, yeah. that's makes it, it makes easier it and makes easy. it more fun. Yeah. But at this point, it's like, <sighs> Yeah. What I don't even I, it's like peers wise, it's like who am I? Gonna, it's just all who are too you drag into Yeah, it? it's like just too hard to do. And then uh, even like Sudeikis, I saw Sudeikis a couple weeks ago, and it was like, yeah, I got to go back to L.A. and I got to do the writers' room. And he just got back from London for eight months, and it's just like uh, that doesn't look like it doesn't seem like a fun life. So you're yeah, you're valuing enjoyment in like life, not first person career, like what yeah. is my what is it yeah i when people bring up Chappelle show all i think about is like i'm fucking exhausted like yeah, i'm yeah, yeah, so yeah. i wouldn't sleep for three days yeah, yeah i'd yeah, have yeah. to edit like in the editing room for two days straight yeah yeah not and then like i'd have to convince Bijan to stay the editor yeah and then 
I would only go home like to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Because I have a no, I don't do it outside of the house. Yeah, no, I get and, that. Uh, you that adds it. up. You got it. Yeah. So, uh, so I just, all I think about is stress. That's yeah. literally all I think about is like it's fear. Yeah. It's like PTSD. And, Yes, PTSD. So the commercials are amazing. The it's commercials like, are great because it's like two days, in out done, two days. Great money. I would say like it's your wedding. Where do you want to stand? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, great. Yeah, product shelf. Shoot the shit out of this. Yeah, Gatorade. Yeah, yeah, I had Gatorade yeah, yeah. with Lillard and Damian Lillard and Serena, and it's like great. Yeah, yeah, yeah Go to yeah. Portland. Go to fucking Palm Beach. But yeah, Serena's like, yeah, I'll be in your Gatorade. You're coming to Palm Beach. Great. See you yeah. there. Portland. Do Damian Lillard. Like just. What have I done? I do Kev. Yeah. Chase yeah. with Kev. Yeah. Doing, uh, I did a NBA 2K, like the most recent one where, where, uh, what's his name from Boston? Uh, Jason Tatum is playing video, whatever. Yeah. It's just like, it's just easy. Sprite. I did Sprite with LeBron. Yeah. It's I hear like, you. No, I hear you, man. It's just, I don't know. I know. I, I you know don't, the feeling, and not a lot of people know the feeling. I know the feeling, and I also and know it's, it's, it's exciting. It's very exciting. It's exciting. But I. But then, and we got a fraction of what you guys experienced. Yeah. But we did experience it, and we experienced it in a downtime where there wasn't a lot of good things. Yeah. Coming out, so maybe it was. It, it felt even bigger because there was really no competition. It yeah. Was like we were putting out a thing every week, and there was nothing new coming out, and then the last dance. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was just like it was it was go time. But you experienced that on a fucking crazy level. And I don't know. I, I'm just curious if it's I mean, it's just too it was it's too hard. But it is good. It is a really fun thing to have an idea, say it, go, yeah. And then you do and it. And do it. And then, and then it's like, yeah. it doesn't even really even, you can't even track it. Has anybody done it with a realistic schedule? Like, has anybody created the show? Apparently, Louie would only shoot for eight hours. Really? Which is like, that's pretty good. But he wouldn't go on location scouts. He like, he would just go he did like, his thing. Yeah, he yeah, would yeah, just yeah. do it. He would edit himself. He wouldn't go on location scouts. Like, he just had it honed to the point where like you it's it's humane and also louis wasn't at the level that we're talking like it was important for I some think. people he was i no, mean of you course, know what of I mean? course but it, it wasn't it's like it's different to be important for some people and then just to be important period yeah it's right like Chappelle show was like it crossed over man yeah it's just you had to see it so it's like yeah i remember hearing somebody goes i was just in vague well the cool thing was we did the taping all right, there was a there was a cut of the first I would edit for I would be fucking dead, yeah, 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 yeah. and I would have to bring a tape up. I was this is how fucking long ago this was. Yeah. I would bring a physical tape to 106 and Park, and so we showed we showed like racial draft like stuff that was done for yeah. the first episodes, and then I was like, I have a cut of Rick James. Like it's not good. Like we yeah. worked on it for three hours. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we showed it, and it's like uneven. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. Got a la the repeat. I like put a repeat in, and that got a laugh. And I was like, "All right, I'll do more of those." And then oh, you got to try, but it, it. didn't. Oh, yeah. Yes, you got to work out the. Oh, bits. we'd show it at Caroline's. Wow. We would show ah, sketches at Caroline's. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're working out the jokes within yeah. the edits. Yeah. We Keep would do I cuts. I wrong. would we would do cuts, and yeah. then Chappelle would do like Caroline's, and then go like, hey, "Here's some sketches." But it was before the show was on, so people were like, "What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing?" We, in fact, but not even what are you doing? We showed the racial draft at the cellar. I think the night before we showed it, and it kind of ate the shit. Fuck out really? And, and Dave was like, "Ah, this is not the right crop." But so wow. we showed yeah. a a cut of Rick James, and Dave was like. That was that was the best we something like that was the best you can do. And he's this is like his favorite story about me. Is I looked at him and I went and I look like fucking yeah, yeah. like a wily coyote, like a yeah. bomb and explode in my face. I go, Yeah, sorry, man. <laughs> like just like fucking I yes, I failed you again. Yeah. With fucking <laughs> by working fucking my dick off. And uh but like and then we sh had the taping and then Dave's wife said she was at a restaurant. It hadn't aired yet, and she heard someone say, I'm Rick James, bitch. And that is over. Before it had aired. Uh, they had been at the taping. 
Oh, from the taping. From the kept... taping, they just were Jeez. saying it. And then somebody said, I was in Vegas, and people at the blackjack table were saying, I'm Rick James Picture. And my first thought was like, why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why would anyone say that? And yeah. then, and I still don't really know why, but I'm glad they did. Is that when you realized how big the show was? That was the cool thing about that was like the show was that was on the fourth week of the second season yes, yes, and the yes. ratings went up a hundred thousand people every week after Whoa. Wow. like a weird like hundred thousand like just point one point two point three so we got a million extra viewers in uh whatever however long that is in 10 weeks 10 weeks and and then our contracts were up of course yeah. now it's game time yeah yes <laughs> um so so yeah so that was that was fun yeah, it's a it's a, a rare. Experience. But I don't. It's not something I. Okay, how about this question? It was a spiritual thing. That's like, not even. This is pre ayahuasca. Uh, it's a spiritual thing in that it's just like we had been. It's just like a ten years of like. Yeah. And then like boosh, yeah. like shit was on the show that we'd been talking about for like the real world sketch we had talked about in ten years earlier. You, Years ago, I knew his friend joke. got thrown off the yeah, show. Yeah, Frank got thrown off the show. Because I think what a lot of people don't realize is like your first special, your first movie, Squid Game is a perfect example of this. Is like you worked ten years for your first album. You yeah, worked ten years for your first special. Like everybody, their first creation is not made in that two-year timeline that the rest of their creations are made. Well, by the way, that's why Steve Martin never did stand up again. He admitted it on Seinfeld on comedians. Like cars. this is my first life. He's like, like I would have taken me ten years to write another this. hour. Yeah. Rarely yeah. is the second album as good as the first album. We somehow hacked yeah. it a little bit. But maybe you had more wealth to give still. We, from yeah, those we times. did. But yeah. also, like, Tucker pitched the racial draft. Brian Tucker. Uh, he writes for Channel Live now. Okay. He's the white. He's in. Uh, uh, I know black people. He's like the whitest looking dude you've ever seen. He's so fucking white. He's the one who said, uh, uh, What is a Lucy? And he's like, Like a, like a hoe? <laughs> um, uh, Tucker pitched a thing like we had Donnell. Well, I the keeping it real goes wrong was kind of me and Donnell. Like there were just hits that were like Kroll actually pitched the N word family. Oh really? Yeah. Kroll and Berbiglia and Roger Hales pitched that. They pitched it kind of pitched like Roger. not Shots how we Roger. did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we they pitched it like a sitcom or they pitched it like a documentary. And then we met. so like we had outside. But that, it was mostly just about like, yeah, not even butting heads, just like this thing. Yeah. yeah. And then you can. Do you think you could do it again, though? Like, do you think if you had the bandwidth, if you had the time and if you had the passion, you weren't worried about stress? Do you think it's a thing that you could create? Could you be part of a show and make that show the thing to watch? Oh, I have no idea. I don't, I not, I not in a way that like, I know what to do. It's like a weird thing where it was Dave's 10th pilot. Yeah. So it's yeah, like, yeah. I hadn't worked on anyone, but it's a weird thing where you, when you find your genre, yeah. like it was one of those things where once we did it, I was like, oh, you should have been doing sketches the whole, the whole time. time. Feels but miraculous. you don't even know yeah, yeah. you don't know that as a when you're yourself yeah, like yeah and then you try and you go oh uh, i'm weirdly good at this this is what i've always been doing yeah yeah and then you start to look back at bits and you go Killing themselves oh with you the baby kinda, yeah you kinda do stand -up yeah, yeah, yeah. And sketches right like, eddie murphy actually told dave like you could write movies like because he's like the way your jokes are they're like visual and yes, like there's cut scene. twos so you could write movies but it never I don't know. It never came up as like ske like sketches. I don't know. And we even when we when he called me to do it, it was like Playboy After Dark. So it wasn't like yeah. it became a sketch show. It was not even supposed to be. It's it's one of those things mm. where like when when you're part of something that successful and you realize what goes into it in order to make it that successful, when you see people who have had multiple successes your respect just has to go so like when you look at like a Christopher Nolan well I don't Nolan, even a uh, who like, Nolan, a Nolan like, yeah when, you, I look, when I look at Nolan I go wait a minute like almost every one is amazing and the ones that aren't amazing are still like pretty good I would argue that Nolan's it's about him and his brother he has the team it's but you him and his team. brother you if you look at all team. their movies yeah 
memento. It's just some weird thing between them, and he's developed a visual style. But it's about. It's like I call it this, like mm. just this fucking ineffable. Like yeah. I don't know. It's just the thing. The yeah. Thing. Yeah. I remember somebody saying, somebody saw before the show came out. Somebody saw me and Dave together and was like, "Something about you two. Hmm. I was like, mm. "But you felt it like." Aren't there people where, where you're around them and you feel funnier? Like, yeah. yeah. And it's just, for whatever reason, they, they get your shit chemistry. and you can start yeah. to, you know, spitball yeah. ideas yeah. and tags come out. And like, yeah. there's certain people. But that's like, always like, we're friends because we would go like, in 1992, we would talk about, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, we yeah, were just yeah, friends yeah, yeah, and yeah. that would talk about shit. Yeah. And then that's the, that's the reason why I'm wary of doing It's like, I don't have that you thing have with anybody. That again to do it. Right, yeah. like you gotta, you need that before. Yeah, you need like people ask me all the time, like, "Well, did whatever I could get money?" I like there's, yeah. sh but I don't feel that way. I remember yeah. watching the Curb episode, the Curb season where they did the Seinfeld reunion, and yeah. every time Jerry and Larry are on camera together, it's a wrap. It's fucking magic, and yeah, you just yeah, see yeah. this chemistry, and you're like, "God damn that it!" That thing, everything I don't even, about Seinfeld makes sense. The yeah. success of Seinfeld yeah. makes sense right there. There's the yeah. one where they're talking about they're like the stage manager from Evening Shade. Or yeah. something where they have inside jokes, Jerry and Larry, that's yeah. on the show. And you're like, I don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. This is great. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, even know. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're doing one argument about a booth in one of the episodes. And like somebody yeah. comes and Jerry and Larry both have a side of the booth. And then they're just arguing about who should let that person sit next. And it's just like, yo, I'm watching the show. Yeah. Yes. You just see the magic right there. Yeah. And that's what I assume you're saying you had with Dave, yeah. where it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. fuck, there it is. So in order yeah. to create that thing, you need there is the th a recipe. Even if the thing's in you, it's like, it's like uh, I say it's like I got an idea that's burning a hole in my pocket. Like, I have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, these shows I did, like, Three Mics and the new one is, yeah, like, yeah. started to transition. No, no. I, but I it is. No, that's no, a no, thing so where I am, like, I have to say this. Yeah. Whether it's whatever happens. Yeah. It's uh, to to liken it to something in stand up like a, you know the new joke that you're working out that's actually good, and you know how like <laughs> if you put it three jokes into the set, those first two jokes are like, oh, do I have to fucking yeah, yeah. Do these? like <laughs> yes. you're so annoyed with everything before it, yeah, that you just want to fucking open. You're on like, it. you guys are phonies, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you guys are fucking phony yeah i wrote you six weeks ago and you were great but this yeah. is the guy yeah yeah, yeah. The, i'm this is my new baby i don't even give a you fuck you guys about are you. so hacky yeah like get oh. out of my set yeah like yeah. why are you even here yeah. i'm glad uh, neil's not having kids yeah. <laughs> you get to four and be like kid. why are you here yeah that's why that's he's my dad that's my impression <laughs> that's my impression of my dad <laughs> uh, uh yeah but you that's the exactly and, or a joke that you you know is right but, but it you, doesn't hit yet and yeah. you're like i'll keep tinkering yeah i have a joke now i in wrote the new, it in the new in show, the new show. Okay. i wrote it i call Chappelle. i go has anyone done this joke he goes you pitched me that joke in 1993 <laughs> he's got like the lebron memory that's crazy oh, memory right he, yeah, yeah yeah he absolutely has a lebron memory. really like fucking beyond like i in terms of like i recall you, and stuff yeah yeah, yeah. His I mine's very good, and his is like how, <laughs> like how the fuck can you? He there's a story I heard somebody told me that uh, Tony Morrison was at Dave's high school. Who's the not Tony Morrison? Uh, the poet, uh, Maya Angelou was uh -huh. at Dave's high school, and she was saying one of her poems, couldn't remember, and Dave finished it for her. No, sure. like just a fucking. He's got like his brain is like put in the smithsonian mm. like fucking crazy his dad was his parents are professors yeah yeah and like, he's got yeah, that yeah. thirst for knowledge it seems like where he just always seems to be reading yeah it's based yeah. on what he's saying it's like oh you're incredibly well read clearly yeah he's not even well read. it's not even reading it's like it's just absorbing. osmosis yeah it's like shit he like how you you hit something with the nolans i didn't think about that i knew obviously it's jonathan and christopher yeah right but that team in order to make the magic and then you look at people who have like made consistent i don't care what some people might say about like i'm a big sandler fan but like yeah it's the they've had that they team, had team this whole time and it's like putting together these random parts to go make a movie that's better than anything else i mean that's to be honest you might say that's why like the marvel stuff is so impressive is because 
they will just quilt together a team to make those movies. Like, okay, you're the new director for this one. Absolutely. And the storylines are so I think hard. they plug it into a fairly specific formula. Ah, Kevin so Feige's he been is, on all of them. So he yeah. is Kevin Feige, is his name? Yeah. Feige. He is the North Star, and then he makes sure everything below works. But still, it's interesting you see that, right? If mm. you want to create magic on a consistent basis. You know what impresses me when you say that, though, through. is Chris Rock, I think, from Bring the Pain to Bigger and Blacker. Yeah. He might have actually gotten, technically, to me, it's his best special. Like, he's fucking, to have that after Bring the Pain, he, I still think I, about that. That's, he's like, more proud of Bigger and Blacker than he is of Bring Dude, the Dude, if you rewatch it. Because he's like, it fucking, it's sold better, which I still can't believe. And he's like, it's impo- it's, a, it's the sophomore album. And it's it was like slapped. fucking, yeah. so it good. was like yeah. 16 months after Bring the Pain. It wasn't. Wasn't like yeah, I took some time off. He literally just like kept going. And you'll notice these little things. I'm sorry, like, he did it a year and and yeah, dude. four months. It was immediate. Yeah, that's that's unreal. And it was so good. And like I I don't know if you've seen Chris Rock's old stuff, but he used to have his habit where he would start <laughs> punching his like yeah. Yeah. when he was feeling himself. You don't see. I think in Bigger and Blacker, he starts to do it once and then cuts it. It like was it was himself. like he he was it was like hacky. He used to knock the mic stand over too, and that was like the joke like. People, whatever people would knock shit over and go like, "Hey, rocks here or something." But, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, like I think big. I like bring the pain more, but Same. like, but bigger and blacker might be better. Big, it's but he would great. say it's better. Yeah, he B- like bring straight the up. pain had that like hunger. Yeah, like you know, and bring the pain. Someone's the like, camera, "I'm gonna change my life." The camera oh, is shaking. Great. Yeah, yeah. They're if you watch so it, hard. they're laughing. Laughter? He always yeah. says, "Well, black people laugh with their feet." So. Yeah. There's, yeah. it's like a fucking earthquake. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. reminded me of I was at Game Six of the Mets, uh, uh, the Bill Buckner game. Yeah, right. I was there. What? Yeah, I was. The, I just happened to. My dad got tickets, and we went. Bill Buckner, uh, classic moments where he's the first baseman, and the Red Sox are about to end their drought. How many years is this at the time? His... And it just goes right through. Wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Buckner was uh, Mets. Boston. Yeah, Played yeah, for Boston yeah. Red Sox. They're, they're playing. And their World Series, Game 6, it's over. And then the, they rally. But Shea Stadium used to m- like move up and down. And I was ah. like, this doesn't feel safe. Yeah, And yeah, that's yeah, rock yeah. special. The camera's fucking shaking. Yeah. That was one of those specials where like they really got the sound right. Like, you know, we always talk about this like when we're putting out anything is like the energy exchange between performer and audience needs to seem even or slightly on the audience's side. Whereas like, have you ever seen somebody special where they're giving a lot, but the audience yeah. is, is, is it's recorded not good. poorly? Yeah. You just feel uncomfortable watching at home. It looks yeah. like they're bombing. Yeah. Even yeah. if they're crushing in the room. Even if they're crushing. I put out f- clips like this. <laughs> it's all <awesome. laughs> I need them down immediately. Why don't you yeah. fucking sweeten them? Now we got it. Now we got, now I got a guy shouts to Big Kev. Yeah. But I got a guy that films everything and we, we have a good system. But before, I was just hiring a guy in a city. And I'm just trying to get clips up because at the time I mixing, couldn't Mixing, I can tell you a story about mixing. Chris's, uh, the Chris Rock show, the HBO show, yeah. which was great. Yeah. Yeah. You guys he, fucked that yeah. up. Well done. I, I, how are, I, how is he I actually feel bad. How is he? Because it was a good feel, show. Yeah, it was I, feel, was I genuinely mean? feel bad. So, Chris Rock had an HBO show that was, that was excellent. It was great. Excellent. And, great. And it was his show. And it was part like, of for yeah. him. It was like just at the same time that you guys found your show, yeah, Chris found his show. He but he found his in ninety seven yeah, through two thousand. Rock shows before they passed on Chappelle show because we they said we have Chris Rock. Why do we need you? <laughs> Which made sense at the moment. I, I mean, I they, whatever. It's defensible, but it's also racist. Um, <laughs> yeah, why is it racist? Because uh, they had fucking too. Bill Maher and That's Dennis what Miller. Saying. We have our black guy. We don't need Chappelle. I mean, I'm, yeah. I mean, twelve <laughs> percent of the population. Thank you, you know, for fifty percent of the prison. Him, what? what? No, I what? Uh, huh? Yeah. What? what? What's going? What? Didn't you tell me some stallion? Transgenders are huh? women. They're oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so rocks, rock would kill so hard in his show that it would be like burnt out. Like the speak, almost it sounded like in the it red. All it would peak, right? So I, when I was mixing Chappelle's show. I would always make it peak to compete with Chris's show. There are laughs and there are jokes in Chappelle's show you can't even really hear. Because they're Be, And they were like, we yeah, can't. Yeah. I was like, do it. You have to do it. Yeah. And I would like have to go to Sony and they played on the big speakers and I'd do the Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson used to play 
he wouldn't he would play he would mix on the big speakers and then he would put it on a shitty boombox yeah and say this is how people are going to hear it so like this is how we should mix there's it. a there's a special he from... also molested kids uh, whoa, 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 whoa. allegedly bro hey 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 but the um bill burr's special in england when he's in that big theater yeah go on usually those big theaters stink for specials because you can only hear the applause pops. Mm -hmm. And if you're an act like Burr, where the laughs are long and, waves, and raucous, yeah. Yes, they're like, like bringing the pain. Bring yeah. the pain had these long laughs. It wasn't just all applause. There are actually people laughing, but you don't pick those up a lot of times unless you mic the crowd well or use like the cam mics. You really get it. Because most people just go, okay, here's a clap at the end of the bit. I guess right. the bit's over. But then the rest of the bit is fucking painful to watch at home. Right. But that sound design is ideal for something that size because you feel the waves. Yeah. You're watching at home and you're like, oh shit, I feel like I'm kind of in this. I don't feel like I'm watching this awkward thing where I'm only getting mic. Right. It's commensurate with around how funny it is. Exactly. Instead of like, hmm, that seems weird. Like, that seems too there's little things or too much. in Chappelle show that didn't get, it, I can't even explain it, that like didn't get, there's a thing when the, the slow motion sketch where we cut to, Dave walking in the and he goes and but we it bombed and he goes nothing funny about that but it was funny we just had to cut out the I can't even explain it but sound design is with comedy is massive huge for viewing experience at home yes yes and that's what a lot of people just don't get they'll like they'll just put out clips but also the in the, the theater if somebody is la like I've yes. had people after my show be like there was a guy behind me who was dying and it was so much better yeah. The contagiousness of laughter is such a thing. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because I have to tell you something very important, okay? And that is you need new earbuds, all right? It's simple as this. You're going to lose your earbuds. You're going to keep on buying these other brands that cost so much goddamn money. You're wasting your time. And when I say wasting your time, I'm not just talking about the time that you go out to get the earbuds, okay? When you could be getting the Raycons. You're wasting time charging those other earbuds because mm. they don't last as long. Mm. See, the thing about Raycon, Akash, why don't you tell them, man? Last a full day. A I full moved day. apartments listening to music, ignoring my wife the entire time. Never once ran low, low on battery. Can I tell you something? You know, Raycons offers eight hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life. That's more than a day. Unreal. Absolutely unreal, okay? There's also built-in uh, a mic, so you can take calls on your earbuds at the press of a button. Raycons start mm -hmm. at half the price of the other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good, and Raycons come with a 45-day happiness guarantee. Think about that. 45-day happiness guarantee. Month and guarantee. a half? Month and a half for you to realize you happy? Damn. You know that they believe in their shit. Yup. You know it for a fact. So you get three new sound profiles to make sure everything you're listening to sounds its best with just the right amount of bass. They got pure mode for podcast listening, blues, instrumentals, balance mode for podcast listening, rock, heavy uh, metal. And there's also bass mode, not for podcasting, but hip hop, EDM, reggae, etc. So what I would do if I were you is right now, okay, I would... Go and make sure you get 15% off your Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash flagrant. Remember, that is 15% off your Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash flagrant. Save 15% on Raycons at buyraycon.com slash flagrant. Akash, you absolutely love them. Love mine. I love them. This and is if you no lose them, you buy another pair and you still pay less than you paid for the other guys. You might as well just buy two. All right, let's get back to the show. It's yeah, watching completely. a movie in the theater, like watching a comedy in the theater. I remember I saw Hangover, the first one, in the theater. Maybe we even saw it together. We saw the second one together. Oh, we saw the second one together. But being in the theater when a joke kills. It's amazing. It's fucking incredible. Dude, we thought it was great. And then if you go back and rewatch it, you're like, what? Was I laughing at? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, everybody, yeah, yeah. I don't think we are all so confident in our own judgment of humor for the most yeah. part maybe comedians are but the average person <laughs> if they, if i say some shit is funny and you don't we're like oh i guess, I guess it's not oh, funny. you also conform to the group so if you hear yes. the audience laughing you're like oh it's funny i'm gonna laugh yeah. yeah i saw the same movie i saw the exact same one again because i was like oh, it's so funny i yeah. gotta watch it again with seven people in the theater it was like a matinee mm -hmm. and i'm like Man, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> now granted i saw the jokes already before but i'm waiting for my brother whoever i saw it with to just fucking lose his shit but he wasn't. Yeah. So something about that. But I was so fucking smart to test 
the pieces to mm -hmm. test the sketches oh. and then re-edit after tests. Yeah. Woody Allen used to, I mean, still does probably uh, when he does his schedule. He schedules in a week of reshoots. Hmm. Like, budget it. I'm gonna fuck up. Like, I'm gonna need reshoots. Mm. Like, it's silly not to. I was... I was saying, I used to say when I worked on The Daily Show, sometimes I'd be like, dude, let me do the, a monologue on Tuesday for Wednesday. Let me just, you have an audience. Let me just try it with the fucking audience. I think they, now oh, they don't have a crowd. You try it on Tuesday, but you actually record yeah. Wednesday. Seth and Fallon test their monologues out with the tour. With the mm. tour group mm. comes through at three. Oh, that's they just it's, They just get 20 people that may not even like them. And then just go like, okay, anything? No, anything? Like, mm. the reason my Twain speech for Dave was good was because I worked it, worked out. it out. Yeah. Like, yeah, I got yeah, off stage yeah. and Keenan goes, how did you do that? And I go, I tried. Yeah. <laughs> how did you work it out? I just said I got to do a thing for Dave. It's not like people are like, who? Yeah, that's true. Oh, like you would hit up comedy clubs. I was doing, say. at the end of my set, I would go like, yeah. I'm going to do this. Like, when people are doing roasts. The people who do the roasts the best are always the ones that work out their five, ten. Yeah. Amen. And they, I've seen it happen. Like, I've seen them go up and be like, hey, this person isn't here, and none of the people I'm joking about are here. Here. I just am going to say these fucking words. Yeah. And just saying them for the first time, not on camera in front of all these people, in front of the famous people, makes it so much better when you actually do. Well, you need, your body doesn't know what to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you have to, like, that's another thing, a Chris thing. I don't know if he's... He before bring the pain. This made this freed me up to be as fucking dorky as possible. Before bring the pain in his uh, house in Brooklyn, he had a wall to wall mirrors and a microphone stand, and he would fucking practice his act really? wow. in his house like a fucking dork. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's the one of the best sets ever. Yeah. And once I heard that, I was like, okay, I, I don't, I don't, won't judge myself for any. Preparation. And what thing. was he trying to practice? Movement. Do everything. Ah. See what like dancers do. I always felt hmm. with Chris early, like I was like, oh, he's this brilliant mind, but I felt like there was a physical awkwardness uh -huh. on stage, and then he was trying to overcompensate with that, with like movement and doing these other, things. you know, the clap yeah. thing was a little weird, but like the mind was just so natural. And he pure. had a joke about. James or the guy who shot Martin Luther King. Yeah, yeah. That and it was so much better than every joke in comedy and his act. It was that uh James Earl Ray assassinated Martin Luther King, and now Martin Luther King, it's a national holiday, including for prisoners. So <laughs> James Earl Ray must walk around prison and be like, you know, I'm the only reason we have officers. <laughs> 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 fucking hilarious and then he made an hour of those you know what i mean yeah. like you just fit that joke and then the another same version of that is uh alan hughes buddy of mine who did uh, menace society yeah and he did the dre and and uh jimmy ivy documentary he said that uh he used to have a rag in his car because menace society was so bad he would just cry on the way home <laughs> It was so fucking bad. He would just, he had a rag for like, and then he would just get a good sequence that he didn't mind showing people. And then you just make that sequence bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> and, bigger. and like, that's all, everything. Just what is this? Do I mind showing this to people? Cool. Wow. So it's like you and your act, you're like this fucking oh, joke. I'll do it. Cause I got to do the time. Rock had the fucking like, truest meanest observation i've ever heard about a set of mine my comedy central hour he goes uh he goes he goes you didn't think you have the time you didn't think you had the time did you i go what are you talking about he goes he goes you slowed down in the last 15 minutes to make the time oh <laughs> and i was like wow and did you yeah <laughs> Duh, damn. why not just tell them yo i got 50 i don't even i don't by the way i don't think i think i did an hour five like i yeah, thought yeah. i didn't have the time yeah but he i absolutely slowed down because i thought i didn't have the time there's guys like leno one time called seth myers and said you know what i like about your your when you're doing a monologue you i i don't know how you feel about your jokes he goes 
when Jimmy Kimmel doesn't like a joke, he looks up and to the left. Oh, shit. When, like, guys fucking veteran, you just got this fucking guy. Yeah. This is, Patrice one time said, I won't say who he said it to, and I, he said the N-word. I'm not going to say it. It's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's, I mean, I mean it's, it. it's almost worth it. Don't <laughs> get me wrong. Uh, not worth a it. A guy who wasn't really a comic, and he, the guy's pacing backstage, and Patrice goes, just go bomb, scared. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the best. <laughs> The scared. best. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, but we get to the point where, like, when a guy know, and you're like, fuck, you're right. Uh, yeah. yeah that, that's canny, the, canny veterans. The dope things about the streaming era is you don't have to fit the TV block. Yeah. You know, oh, like, yeah. Oh. Back in the day, it had to be an hour. Yeah. Actually, it had to be probably like an hour. For it was for yeah. it was literally for the section of the DV like it was some it's it literally a manufacturing yeah, 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 yeah. it doesn't get considered a special to if be it's on under a certain type minutes. of DVD yeah. it's got it's like it's that dumb yeah. and it's that the TV is and there's 44 minutes of average like yeah. it is that stupid it's still that way dude when they hit us up about like uh getting a what is it a fucking Emmy or something like that for the for the Netflix thing yeah. we did they're like. Oh, there's no category for what you guys did. And then it's like, just like the talking funny category. Can you just do that? Like, no. the, there's there's none? Like, there's no category that you can Wouldn't put it in? Wouldn't it just be comedy special? Yeah, just put it as comedy special. Or they're like, well, technically it's four segments. And I'm like, we'll just make it not. Yeah. We wrote it as just a thing and then chopped it up into four. You think it's going to be like another January 6th if you get a, if you get a nomination? <laughs> <laughs> we count it! <laughs> they're going to storm the, the academy? <laughs> but um, I mean, not like I give a fuck about those things, but it, it just shows like the antiquated thing. And it's so cool that now with a special, you can like even with what you're doing now, I'm assuming yeah. you're going to do a special. Right. Yeah. And you'll just choose the hour and five minutes of it that it's great. The hour and 10, that 53, whatever yeah. you want it to be yeah. is what it will be. And there'll be no pushback. Yeah. I imagine. No, I don't think so. I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't I want it to be. I'll ask like Robbie from Netflix, like, what's the good? Like I said, does it matter where what the venue is? Ah, because I could do it in a. No I'm, I'm doing Open it like a masks. two. Uh, yeah, but I have good mask jokes. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, ah. people still get it. Yeah, it's not <laughs> like people are like, what? Yeah, when is this Who's from? Mess? What? Yeah. Um. Fuck this guy. <laughs> Squid game? Yeah. Make, I don't have any idea what that could possibly mean, but yes. Um, and But I'll ask questions like that. Like, what's the... Does venue size matter for viewers? Uh, I think... But again, Rock question. is like... Rock's like he used to look at all of his specials as all an infomercial. Yeah. Burr never cuts to the crowd. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what makes for a better special. Like mm. I don't, I don't know yeah, what. Yeah, was that made... pointed that out. I just moved to New York and I was listening. Burr special had just come out. Why do I do this? Yeah. And Sherrod's like, it was great. No audience cutaways. None of that. I like that. And I was like, huh. And I thought that's what like if you're a real comic, you hate cutaways. But now I'm like, oh, I think it's just a personal choice. It's literally just a personal choice. I can see uh, when it's just cutting to the audience. Usually it's like because they're making an edit, right? They're taking right. a chunk out, but. I can't. I like. Or they're making an offensive joke about Asians. You cut to the Asians. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. also. And they go, they're, they're on board. Laughing, what, right? What's your you problem? think it's funny. Hey, cheer up, honey. <laughs> <laughs> but being able to, I don't know, for some reason, like one of my favorite things about watching like Def Comedy Jam was the crowd. Oh, of course. Yeah, but that's imagine Def laughing. Comedy Jam like without the crowd, like without seeing people get up out their seats. And it's one season. It. It's one season, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Stan Lathan directs, directs all day specials because we just talk about like this is the best comedy show I've ever seen. Yeah. Because the lip that comes out yeah, the and the crowd yeah, 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 and the yeah. fucking. Also, the thrust oh. is just, yeah, we did that for. And the backdrop's like, what is that? Scaffolding? <laughs> but that's when you could <laughs> Or do like that. a radiator? What yeah. the fuck is it back there? It was like, um, I don't even know what that style is called, but like there's a ladder and shit. Like, it's like industrial? Yeah, you could yeah. just put things up like, like, hey, we just decided to do it here. Yeah. You hey, know, we didn't. They didn't even know we were coming. Yeah. We're gonna do a comedy <laughs> show. Yeah. I think Aziz tried to do that, but with like nothing Where? in the background. Oh, uh, in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The Brooklyn thing. Yeah. yeah. That was. That's actually a really funny one to watch because you can see people in the background. At one point, there's like ten, and then later and there's, there's like six. two, and it's like yeah. 
are people leaving his <laughs> <laughs> <That's true. laughs> like, no, the crew. workers. Yeah. But did the crew go out for a smoke? They like, you know during, there's union they rules. Hold them. <laughs> Yo, guys, <laughs> stay where you are for yeah, 60 guys, minutes. Yeah. Um <laughs> yeah, I don't but that I'm more curious about like what's effective. Yeah. Cuz we don't you don't I don't know what the good length is. Cultural connectivity, strong beginning. So I think it's like something first of all you it has think. to be heat. Ah. Uh, I well Cuz by the way, yeah. Cat Williams does 13 minutes about Jacksonville. I've never been to Jacksonville. You want to get yet, into you want to get into the minutia of it? And yet I I think it works. Another the quick Neil Brennan name drop story. Uh, never met Cat Williams. Met him, and I go, you know, I uh, there was a Vulture article about where they, what do you like or something. And I met and I talked about Cat's the fact that he talked about Jackson for 13 minutes and it shouldn't work and it does. And I tell Cat, I was like, hey man, I I I like did an interview about you, and he goes, oh I know, I printed it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the wall of my office because how often does a comedian speak well of another comedian? Oh, oh wow. But isn't Cat like aren't both of his parents doctors like Oh or yes. something like that yeah, like yeah, lawyers yeah. like yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah. The perception of Cat I think yeah. from the outside the average person like a super brain. Yeah. I and I I you know. Uh, I think so he that told me, me I like, know that's I his father His brilliance is not His father shocking. and I, this is wrong but it's something like his father invented the enzyme for tang. <laughs> It's like that, like <laughs> Tang, the powdered. Yeah, like yeah. that brand. He like was involved thing. in Tang. It's something like it's not exactly Tang, but it's something like that. Right. Um, yeah, you yeah. gotta have super like Kanye's mom's a, was a, like you gotta have great, yeah. smart fucking. In terms of doing well, we were thinking about this yesterday, uh, and I think that a lot of times people reach out for the masses when they're trying to make something go. Cause I've been thinking about at least with Netflix specifically, I was like, what's the last thing on Netflix that like just blew up that they wanted to blow up. That's rare. Tiger well, they King don't know. It's not supposed to be. No, a hit. They, it, they don't. Squid game is not supposed to be a hit. Right. There's something on Netflix. And I think there's something in us that taps into exploration. Like Squid Game, when you watch Squid Game for the first time, not you or me, I mean, I just watch it because I'm the second wave, but the first wave of people that find Tiger King or Squid Game, they think that they're like into a new band. Yeah. They're like, yo, I found a secret. Yeah. I found a secret on Netflix. That's so what Lauren, Lauren Michaels says. Uh, it's when, when they go, I, the, he'll go, I, they discovered you on Channel 4. Yeah, yeah they discovered you. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah like, yeah, yeah. you came they're into really their searching. living room yeah. on Channel 4, yeah. and they're like, who is this yeah. Kristen Wig? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> huh. All right, Lauren, you get the credit, okay? <laughs> mm. You yeah. discovered him, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I think that there's something to that, like, we want to discover. So having some distance is valuable, or you tap into communities that are more monolithic in their viewing habits, right? So it's like, if... Cat is the black comic of the time, which he was when he was putting out those specials, especially you're definitely referencing. It's like the community is going to flock to it. And black Americans overrepresent influence for their numbers. You know what I mean? Like what black Americans do, Americans do, but they're 12%. So it's like if 12% can influence what is cool for the other 88%, the marketing shouldn't be done to the 88 the marketing yeah, should be done I mean, to the yes, twelve. But I, but then it, it's White also one of those things where what we watch, we're too divided. Like some of us will be like, "I'm into Succession." Other people like Big Bang Theory. Like it's rare that all whites go to one thing, but we get looked at. Uh, we get looked at as if we do. But if you go into like minority groups and tap into them, they'll start telling everybody. If there's a new Mexican comic, please believe Mexicans will be talking to each you know other. What's weird a new is Filipino tend comic. to do it the opposite. Indians tend to. Russell is the exception. Indians are like Canadians. Where like once it's popping in America, yes. now Canadians are like, oh, this is our shit. Indians tend and to need you to be co-signed by like mainstream America. And then we're like, oh, that's our guy. And yeah. they'll ride the hardest. Yeah. But they need everybody else to sign off before they're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's our guy. But Russell's I, yeah. the one exception. I think that's the way that you go to like. Russell got all of Asia though. Yeah, he yeah, yeah I mean, he Russell, got, man. It's the greatest style Legends. of comedy. Where Legends. in of the world are actually Crowd impressions funny? of crowd work? Yeah, I just I mean crowd work and then leading it into an impression you're sitting on. Yeah, it's just brilliant. Like where in the world are do people not sound funny from other countries? You know what I mean? Like yeah. if I'm in the Philippines, the Mexican accent is funny. Yeah. Doesn't matter where I am. But it's also like if people in other countries are watching your stand up, that's partially because of Russell Peters. 
Yeah. Like that motherfucker is like a colonizer of stand up or yeah. a conqueror, ambassador. You well, know what he I mean? said like, one time, I, I did a show with him and he's like, my audience doesn't like stand up. Mm. My audience likes me. Because he's the first version of it. No, but it is right. Somebody was saying, I think Rock was saying, like, a Dave or a K, it's like that is some all boats rise with the all boats are raised by the rising tide like yeah yeah like Dave and Kevin yeah yeah, yeah yeah you guys are fucking smart yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is my ninth hour of this podcast so I'm <laughs> sorry if I'm fading a little bit it's uh giving Rogan a run for its money yeah. um uh the but like we all can't like be nice. i know yeah, 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 like, yo. we were having a good conversation <laughs> we were being sweet there was well, a you guys jumped on my ass fucking, about the rising you tide you and Chappelle yeah. show you <laughs> interpreted that as fuck you that's the problem we were just like yeah that's what it is i interpreted hello as fuck you yeah, that's okay, my fair problem. enough okay um go. uh the uh but like, yeah, Dave or Kevin or these guys that like they're big tent people. Yeah. And then they go, oh, I like I like the whole thing. Yeah. But most people don't even watch comedy. That's the crazy part. But so that's why you got to tap in smaller. And when you tap in smaller, you don't have the same scrutiny from the networks. Like even when we did like we we're guy code. Remember guy? Code, yeah. Right. Guy code wasn't supposed to be a show that was a hit at all. It was just an afterthought on MTV2. But it caught like young like hip hop heads, right. and, like kids who were into like Jordans and shit, and for whatever reason it just like caught them. Right. And it caught that one little group, and every single one of them watched it. And then from then it kind of blew. Oh, I know what you're saying. Well, I I I like, I'd say it. They're the, making all this content. It's for like the you have like to run for. In order to run for president, you have to win the primary, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you have to win the primary, even with movies or like, especially the way it used to be. Is in order to be a movie star, you had, especially comedy, you had to be, have two scenes in another movie yeah. that you crushed. Yeah. And then they would go, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like Dave was really funny, Nutty Professor. Yeah. So they were yeah. like, you know, that's how we got the meeting to we do it half baked. Like, yeah. and with, with this, to your point, like you have to have, get constituents that aren't like on Main Street. Yeah. And you have to then like get it's got to be like a word of like everything's kind of got like an underground feel. And those communities are underrepresented even in conversation. Like I even noticed like when we put out clips like we put out clips about like uh, somebody like a Bosnian person that I made fun of randomly. The whole Bosnian community is passing around. I go out to a fucking steakhouse and if it's Bosnians that run the steakhouse, they're all knowing about this 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 moment yeah. you know uh that's uh keegan michael key told me the reason that name teacher sketch yeah. thing like is because the people that oh shack hennessy no teachers uh, it mm. was teacher the reddit thread of teachers was like oh this is and then well, it gets okay. reddit is a i reddit <laughs> is a great website you know, I, I don't is, give a fuck like we learned about reddit through mark like we, we knew Reddit existed, you know what I mean, but we didn't really understand what it was. But what this Reddit, is where I give you the credit. I'd stare at you like this is your c contribution to the world. Like, yeah, exactly. oh, my Reddit guy over here, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You and you're like, no, it. I'm a comedian, yeah. man. I'm really, I'm like, oh, so Reddit, huh? Yeah. No, but like, but in the same way that like Reddit creates these communities, right? And these communities push these things to the top, right? They push it to the top of our interest, and the things that exist in the community, the community cares about. Right? Yes. And. Once you get all the eyeballs of people who care about a certain thing in the exact same place at the exact same time, you can really push that thing That's to the top the and you can get wave. some views. Exactly. That's what literally minority groups and television or content were before Reddit. It was literally the idea was like, oh, there's a show. There's one show about black people on TV. Let's watch it. All right. We'll have a look. It's the only people look like me. Might as well check yeah, it out. Yeah. Jeremy Lin plays basketball for the Knicks. Yeah. Every Asian in New York. Was at the Knicks so game. I was a week. fan because he was close enough. There it is. <laughs> I was like, I'll close take it. Close enough that. to India. Yeah, I'll take yeah. it. Close enough. So it's like everybody keeps on trying to get like the succession whites in America. I don't even know if they're the succession whites, but like this idea of. I whiteness. think you just do some good shit. And usually if it's about something, that group, like I get the yes. mental health, I get the depression people, which who aren't great with word of mouth. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I should have picked yeah. differently. <laughs> Lively fan um, base. Yeah. But <laughs> like, I get like the mental health area. Yes. And then that 
you, then it spreads out from there. I, I think that you got to create what you want to create if that's right. got to come from a real place. But then when you're looking at the marketing and you're like, oh, shit, like nobody's speaking to these people in the mental health space. And like, this is something really important to me and I really care about. This shit is probably going to really resonate to them. Right. If you go to an exec and ask, ask them which clip they should put out, they'd be like, what is your most relatable clip to everybody? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, there's a clip about chicken soup. And you're like, buddy, yeah. you are missing it. Mm. Give yeah. me 10% of people that are going to tell every one of their fucking suicidal friends about it. <laughs> and now they got to watch it. They got to watch it quickly because they're going to yeah. be dead in 72 hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the opposite of Chappelle's so show. I mean, it goes down by 100,000 every, every week. week. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's big sad. opening day. Not a lot of repeat Man, life, customers. Life really is circular. You lose 100 and you gain 100. Uh, Tell us about this show, Neil. You know, I want to go. Andrew, thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's basically <laughs> the ways in which... Uh, it's like it's called unacceptable in that like I'm not I don't do anything I'm not I don't have kids not married yes I don't eat meat don't really drink generally smoke weed uh, live alone have a dog fine with it I'm liberal I'm not I'm like kind of not a good liberal yeah racially it's like yeah I write very good racial jokes and like but like you know but yeah. maybe Michelle Obama thinks I'm racist yeah yeah there's a I don't fit in <laughs> yeah. Any, I'm not really like anyone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're giving me all the reasons no one should come to this. Well, no, but what I've come to realize is like, ev no one feels like they belong. Uh, That's yeah. the thing. Like you're about not the closest analog, but you're like similarly like yeah. something. I, yes. When when you walk on stage. You never know what everybody is thinking about you. Now you probably know because you're a famous person. But remember early in stand up when you get on stage for the first yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I'd envy like a fat guy that would go on stage. Yeah. Because everybody knew. You ever? You know what's funny? I've had black comics admit to me that they only want to be the they want to be the only black comic on a show. Really? Why? Yeah. Why? Why? Because oh, so they, they get go? all the fucking monopolizing the mm. other. The other and I'm the fish, and, out, of water. I'm I'm the fish out of water. Yeah. Yeah. Be the black show on TV. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. you can and you can get the like it's it's the the fishiest out of water person. Yeah, and you get all of like the uh, you can do all the jokes. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. you can do all the w white people looking at me, whatever. Like, yeah, um, that's right. Yeah. If you have the other black guy that goes on the show before. Yeah. Now like, there's not this discomfort. Right. There's not that instant tension, which is good for comedy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so but yeah that feeling of not knowing how you were how a white person opens his show if they're not fat or like wheelchair or something yeah i'm like ah, that sucks dude yeah. that sucks oh yeah just i from have a, to open about my race which kind of sucks but it's just there you go it's That's easier it. yeah. it's done what makes yeah. it's like life having a uniform easier? in school yes yeah. what makes life easier makes comedy harder yeah <laughs> Yeah. Right. It, that's usually a function that all, or the, an equation that always works. Right? right. So it's like if you're a hot woman, life's pretty easy. It makes comedy, comedy pretty tough. really yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah. Right. And if you're like really weird and you have the, the kind of like a misfigured face or some shit like that. Right. You know what to talk about the second you get on stage. And I'm sure it gets annoying and fucking boring. I'm sure if you're like a gay comic coming out every single time that you go on stage, right. like pain in the ass, like painful moment in your life, you just got to fucking relive. But it's still something that you can talk about that you're all on the same page. Yeah. Right. So instead, you'd have to learn how to write jokes. Right. And But I understand that feeling that like um, there's like this vague sense of like, what are Yeah, you? and I don't, I'm not, when people go, yeah. the, people go like, you're like Eminem. I'm like, what the fuck what are you mean? talking about? Yeah, yeah, Just because you've like, seen me with black people. It's like yeah, yeah. the most simplistic, dumb uh, distillation. So yeah, yeah. it's about feeling like the I'm not acceptable yeah. like i'm not in the world and how it's kind of it eats away at me because i think like why don't you want to have kids why aren't you married why aren't you a better liberal what is what's going on with you and race yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. like all the sh uh, like why why doesn't weed like mdma doesn't work on my brain i've done it seven times doesn't work just really? where I'm like something I keep saying a couple times during the show I say like something's wrong with me and then there's a story at the end where I like even in comedy I'm like every comedian I meet's like seem like more of a writer and every writer's like you're more of a comedian <laughs> yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. when when comedians say you're a writer it means like give me your jokes yeah. and when a, when a when a writer says you're a comedian it means like you're annoying yeah um, <laughs> 
<laughs> um, so it's like fitting in. And then there's like a Netflix anecdote where Rock made the fucking best, funniest fucking joke about me. Like, but like laughing stuff. I'm not going to do the joke, but it was literally like Ellen, Eddie, Dave, Chris, like the Hall of Fame, like Burr. I, the joke I do is Decap. This this story is so name droppy. Uh, DiCaprio was there. I don't even mention it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's yeah, yeah, yeah. and the cutaways were like Ellen, like ah, ha, ha, yeah. and just like this feeling of like even the I'm not I don't have. It's kind of what I was saying before. It's like there aren't a lot of people. My peers, like age wise, Dave, adds, we're having different experiences. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Like. Chris, me and Chris are have gotten close in the last decade or so, but like there's just not a lot of and then there's like when I started doing stand up, I had already done Chappelle show. So I'm like this rich, successful guy, and then the new guys are like Kroll, Mulaney, Aziz. Yeah. Then they're all more then they shoot a butt. So I'm like kinda like ah, yeah. I don't have like my guys. Who are your peers? Right. I don't I just don't have any. Yeah. Which I don't expect anybody to care about, but it's from my point of view, it's like, mm. yeah, <laughs> it's a bit like I. There's no one like. Remember when we? It's fucking, you know. There's a there's an isolation. Yes, there's an isolation. Yeah. Which and then so the question becomes: Is something wrong with me, or is something wrong with the world, or is nothing wrong at all? There's a there's a right there's a. Uh, uh, Nipsey Hustle thing, and I'm sure he didn't write it, but it's, would you rather be at peace with yourself and at war with the world, or at uh, war with, war with world, yourself peace. and at peace with yourself? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and it's like, ah, uh, either one, you're at war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which war do you want? <laughs> so it's just a matter of choosing, and and but what I found is like, like with three mics, I just went first. I wasn't worried like no one's gonna. I kind of thought like people are gonna relate to this in some way. Yeah, yeah, and. Yeah, yeah. With yeah, it's like with three mics where people are like, "Oh yeah, my so and so." I don't think there's anybody who wakes up and is like, "I feel perfectly part of something bigger yeah. than myself." Well, if you don't, then nobody does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I feel like what you were saying before, like not exactly knowing, right? You know, like, um, but I'm also kind of like, I guess, comfortable in operating within that, like. You know, in terms of peers, like Akash and I starting together, and we have like a few guys that we started together, but like I have a very small, tight knit group. And it's probably because, like, within my group, I know that I, I don't know, I feel like a sense of responsibility for that group. So I can't just be like, there's certain guys who are just like friends with everybody. It's like, right. well, what happens when they need something? Right. And like, what happens when you get something and you have the opportunity to put them on? You just go, right. ah, I'm sorry, buddy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I want to be in a position where if, if I got something, everybody got something, you know? Right. And I also don't like being in a position where, like, but that's got yeah. its own pitfalls. Yeah. If you guys wouldn't mind leaving the room, wisely. I like to talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you got to choose wisely. Yeah, but it's still gonna be like there's still gonna be fucking petty and and like you th just shit that you can't even believe happens. Give people credit, man. Give I don't that I don't have a problem credit. with, but I just know guys that like rich successful you know guys that don't give credit no no but i know rich successful guys who's like if they buy the mom a house then the brother and sisters don't want to have thanksgiving at that house because oh, you think you're better than us that's stupid petty i petty. agree but it's very human yeah and it ha it happens with like school like not yeah. almost everybody but like there's like the hero's journey and then there's like the opposite of the hero's journey, yeah, 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 like yeah. where you just see what happens to narcissists. There's an uh, <laughs> article by this guy, Tim Minchin, uh, yeah, in The yeah. Guardian. Yeah, it's great. He hasn't done Sam in 10 years. Yeah, he had done yeah, Sam yeah. in 10 years. And he said, because he could tell what fame was doing to him, oh, wow. was bad. And he wore eyeshadow before. So you can only imagine. <laughs> yeah. Um, but his, like, the way he describes it's like, yeah, I've seen, I, it's like, there's just a program yeah. that people get in. And yeah. like, oh, yeah, let me get I can tell you what's going to happen here. But yeah, I feel like also that happens like when you isolate yourself from, you know, the people that can be honest with you. It and might, it's just basic insecurities. It also might be a yeah. little bit different now with no with much less industry pulling the strings like you operate 
on your own to a larger. You'll work with these guys, but like, yeah, you are your own guy. You yeah, know I, I mean? don't. I don't feel like I have to sell my soul to go to a party. Yes. I don't want to go to a party. Like, you, I've seen you turn down all this stuff. Like, you don't. Yeah. You play the game on your own terms, and now we all see we kind of have that ability. Yeah. So I'm not saying petty shit won't pop up. Yeah. I think we do a good job of always putting the friendship first. But yeah, it could pop up. But also, it's. I think it's less likely when like. Like, I'm sure Comedy Central was saying stuff to you and Dave and yeah, yeah. causing this whole... Th- oh, yeah. We don't have as much of that because there's no right. Comedy Central right now. Yeah, we're not fighting for, like, the other people's money. Whereas, right. like, yeah, and I can see that totally happening. Like, everybody trying to get theirs. But I do feel, yeah, that's tricky. That's also very tricky. And then you're being put against each other. And, yeah, that's, that can and be, And it still like, work to make sure this always goes well, especially as, like, Andrew's career skyrocketing. I always want to make sure I'm nothing but happy for him. And right. I don't need anything from that. That's right. my, my brother doing great. Great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, but it's easy for some people that don't have a relationship we have to be like uh, jealous or resentful or something like and that. And also a little easier if there's no outside forces being like, and there's know, also a like here. a kind yeah. of like, I'm sure there's literally someone tweeted at me today or something. Uh, or, or he DM me something about like, Something, something, Dave Chappelle's dick washer or something. It's like, but yeah. that, but again, Dave doesn't say it. Yeah. Dave yeah, didn't yeah. say it. Yeah. Some fucking guy said it. Yeah. yeah. And it's still, so that's rattling around in my head. Yeah. There's shit that you get a fucking sudden, I'm sure there's a million oh, of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. And so it's, you have to like filter that out when you see anybody that you're working with that's like, well, I'm not going to put that on them, but it's just hard. You know what? You know, it's like what was I think helped us is I got to go through everything Akash goes through with Sharla. Yeah. Right. So it's like I knew exactly what was going on. I knew all the fucking DMs and you get you get both sides of the DMs. Like yeah. everybody here is going to get the DMs like, yo, uh, the show ain't shit without you. Yeah. You're yeah. the best, blah, blah. And then everybody's also going to get the DMs, which is like, yo, you're the only, you suck. You're the worst. You're fucking blah, blah, blah. I love yeah. when you're not there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So much better. <laughs> yes. So it's when, like, when do you see the comments on this? Yeah. It's going to be the first 10. We have to vote them down, guys. Yeah. <laughs> someone's someone's got to moderate. No, no, I think they're going to like you just ripping us to shreds. No, they'll enjoy that. They'll go, this, the, it, yeah. Someone's going to use the word actually a lot. Yeah, yeah. This guy's actually, actually funny. funny. Yeah. Really? Yeah. After 25 <laughs> fucking years of giving you material you quoted to every girl you were trying to fuck? Now I'm actually yeah, funny. Right. Thanks, just, you fucking goofball. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's what you gotta try to remember, though, is who that person is. Bro, I mean, so I, funny. it's very. How many dicks yeah. got pussy off of your lines? Oh. Rick James, bitch. I mean, you can't hey, you literally. Check out this sketch. And yeah, then, yeah. You, it's it's incalculable. Yeah, but it is interesting. Like, I don't know. It's avoidable and it's very hard to avoid. Like, it's yeah. it takes uh, premeditation from the first person to succeed. Yeah, and. And then post meditation, it's like it just so you you ta- it it's down. just like then you have to know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, and you have to be you have to like the the you have to like the thing you have to like you have to like this you have to like this you have to like the people you're working with you have to respect the people you're working with and then yeah and you also have to I don't know for me it's like that you have to be like super grateful for it. You know, I, right. I think that's something like we are the worst people. We meaning comedians are often like the worst people to become famous because there is an inherent narcissism and ego. Well, it's so also it's like, a smallness of of character where it's like I got to be the prettiest, and there can be no second place. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you can't even. So it's no like, one yeah. can come in second yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. Like no, no, no. They, I have to win outright. Yeah. 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 Or else it's let's not even do it. Yeah. 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 Uh, and that's the that's the. That's the stuff that, and, but, but again, end, that ends I know a lot of really, it's not just comedians, I, musicians. It's, yeah, it's people in the it's business. Just, yeah, it's just showbiz but people. But that's what fucks everything. And it's like, it, can I get a water? Yeah. Can I? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Is David, your, can you grab a, a, I drink both of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, having that, like, I don't know, I've seen that. I've seen the fucking jealousy and that kind of stuff becoming corrosive. And there was this guy. It's just like fucking random guy just said this to me and, and it kind of really resonated because I would think about it with Charlotte and Charlotte is like just super, he's very generous with credit. And like, Charlotte's like very like uh, not 
very show busy. Yeah, he's he's not show busy, and that's Thank something you. like I saw him just be successful without having to do that whole thing. Yeah, but also like I would tell him all the time, I'd be like, buddy, like you're way bigger than me. Like if if you want to call this your show or any of that kind of stuff, and he was like, no, no, it's you know it's ours. We're just right. doing it together. And like I just tried to fill in as many gaps as I could. I was like, okay, he's offering all this. You know value. what's weird about the brilliant idiots? You guys are more popular separately than you are together. It's fucking bizarre. <laughs> It's Isn't that crazy? one of those weird Isn't it's like crazy? it like it's so weird. Like you're both great on your own and people are like, "Yeah, just get rid of the uh, get rid of the other guy." And meanwhile, I don't know, it's fucking it's so it like goes against that spirit thing that I was saying. Yeah. Because yeah. the spirit it's like you guys have a spirit, but I think the audience is like, "We don't like this spirit." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, t- separate it. <laughs> but I like I, peanut butter and chocolate, but together. Together, why would you? But I learned a lot from him about it and like dealing with that kind of stuff, and and that was very helpful. And I think a lot of people they just don't get that opportunity, and like also understanding like the feeling of being in 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 that position, being like a number two and to somebody who's huge. Like when yeah. we started that podcast, like Charlemagne was fucking going, bro. Like it was out of here, you know. So. Understanding what that was, checking my fucking ego, ego every week. Like, I'm sure you've experienced this being around famous people. Like, you ever around someone famous and you try to say something and the person that you're talking to cannot even shift their head to care when you say something because Leonardo DiCaprio is talking or he could talk. He might not even be saying anything. Right. And just to sit in a room and like say something funny and then look at everybody like, no, nah, nothing. Yeah. You just waiting. Well, that's whenever I'm on stage with Dave. He'll like, my jokes have to be perfect. Yeah. And he just has to be like, <laughs> <laughs> hit the mic on his knee, and people are like, fucking, yeah. <laughs> I have to like fucking have diagrams and shit because they're like, I don't. I would say, like, he's Skittles, and I'm the guy with the recipe for Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> it's going like, to taste the same. Yeah, no, no. Well, no, it's just like, I know how to make it. And it's like, do you have Skittles? No, but like, I. Develop skit. Yeah. Yeah, forget it. Yeah, yeah. Just eat the skittles. <laughs> um, yeah, that. But that is good that you've been able to. It's if you. Lo- We're it's kind of like you. Yeah, yeah and you're We're lucky, lucky, and yeah. you appre- and appreciate it, even if it's not uh, the most lucrative. Or it's it's. I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Comedian, uh, big comedian, and I'll just say who it was Cedric, right? Yeah. Cedric said, I like going on tours with other people more than by myself. Mm. Less money, but less it's time. Just fun, yeah. le- it's just, but off stage, the hang, it's like, how much money do you need? Mm. Yeah. yeah. At, at a certain point, it's like, ah, more. Yeah. But you're fucking bu- alone and not that, it's not friendly. You're not, yeah. I, I the, the joke I've been doing, you know, when people on reality shows say, I didn't come here to make friends. I actually came here to make, make friends. friends. Yeah. <laughs> like I came here to make friends and everybody else is like, ah, I got the, yeah. okay. I just, I thought it would be, I think it's cool that we can do this and make money from it. So yeah. like the. But you're also doing it for the love of the game. Like right. you didn't have to come back. Weirdly, when I was starting, I think you were getting I never was again. in it though. That's the thing is I was never a comedian. I remember I was, seeing you. I remember right. you see the comedy village. Yeah. You remember the comedy yeah, village course. right there? And I remember seeing him going back, and I, and I was like, oh, yeah, I guess, of course he does stand-up. But I didn't know yeah. you were a stand-up. Right. So I didn't know what it was. I, like, wasn't. But you had jokes, though, so yeah, yeah. it's not like you weren't? No, no, you know I, I mean? knew like, how to write jokes, yeah, but I wasn't. Yeah. I would do it, like, once a week. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I was yeah, busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just, yeah, so, like, your path was different. It was like, um, yeah, it's like you're a guy who's, There's no, yeah. that's the other thing. It's like, I don't have any, it's like, you know, like, when a guy creates a huge show and then... Yeah. The other guy goes to Africa, and then the one guy does stand up. Yeah, yeah. It's like there's no one else. <laughs> there's no one like, oh, so we should. Inter- there's no one. Yeah, I did it wrong. Yeah, you like I just yeah, yeah. did it wrong. Which, but I, it's fine. Like it's not even like there's it's no fine. wrong. But you right. just came at it, and like for me, I'm looking at it like you actually love the game. I you didn't love have it's. To. I I I'm like a gym. Like yeah. I love. Yeah. I like you're a con- seven footer like who that, actually wants to play basketball. The Kim mm. monologue yeah. where I'm like, man, I wish I fucking could have gotten a couple of licks in that shit. Yeah. Like, mm. yeah. <laughs> even Chris and Blake were in a sketch. I was like, this fucking stupid motherfuckers didn't text me. Like, I yeah. would I had jokes immediately for both of them that were whatever. Yeah. Like, you just want to get in. Like, yeah. oh, I like, I like it. 
Yeah, you went uh, back in, bro. Well, I like Neil's. Neil's. Neil's got. A little, I like comedy. I don't. I don't want to. I like. Well, I like comedy, but I don't. That doesn't he mean he wants to be like a I'm, consultant. Yeah, I'm not out that? of it. No. What about that? Like, what about instead of doing the the toil and the grind, but like be a consultant on something that is regular? Have I ever told you what I make on commercials? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not like yeah. why? Why? Yeah. You're the Cody I just of do comedy. stand up. And then it's I'll like, come, you gotta and, come to my house. I'll come and do your commercial. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm happy to do it. <laughs> yeah. I'll help. And a lot of times they're like, Ugh. has anyone ever offered you an exec job? It seems no. like you have a good eye for funny. You have been behind the right, scenes. But why would I want to go somewhere and try to convince other convince unfunny people? I would think if I'm funny. an exec and I'm saying, what should we green light and what should we not? This would be a good guy to be like, hey, what do you think of this? Yeah, I actually offered. I said, told the network, give me a, give me a hundred grand a year and I'll read all your scripts and I'll tell you which ones you should do or not. And oh, God, no. <laughs> can you tell his company oh i don't it was 10 15 years ago it was uh, like, um they probably just thought it was out of my mind yeah but that doesn't were. mean anything like i don't i that doesn't whatever that they want people want to they want to get in the game yeah, yeah they want they they want the scalp they want to they want i that's the other problem with my me and my age is like no one can take credit for me oh they want to be the no guy one be like found. you know i saw him Ah. He pulled up in a Tesla, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I thought he's never gonna make it. Yeah, um, like he needs my help. Like yeah, I'm yeah. Our, the only guy that can do, cr take it is Dave. Yeah. So like, yeah. That's another like not like it's a huge disincentive, but it's more exciting to discover Aziz for them. But I'm sure for you, like the success of three mics was probably very validating. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Okay, here's this thing that I'm doing outside of what most people know me for. Yeah. And it's unique and successful. It's different. The Twain speech was more that than anything. Yeah. Yeah, but the Twain speech is still connected. It's only seven minutes. It's but short again, enough to go super viral. It's, That's but the it's thing. But, the and the other thing, it, psychologically, yeah. cutting from me to Dave, where people are like, what? Wait. What? Uh, Seeing him like it yeah. was like, does something to them. Oh, fuck yeah. Like, oh, it clears everybody's like, oh. cash. Because I thought yeah, 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 he, yeah, yeah. wait, so he would probably say stuff and then yeah. he would say like. The, also, it, you're no longer racist. Oh, if anybody thought you were. A, a skillion percent. I swear to God, I actually believe that. Uh, I legitimately so believe that. it does that. work to have cutaways. <laughs> so only, yeah. but all, if you've got a specific say. goal yeah, yeah, yeah. black people yeah, yeah. yeah they cut, cut to a, like every to america's black favorite black pain. guy you can get a cutaway of dave laughing that's use all it. about it. yeah we got to use that cutaway Same you got really yeah. got anything yeah. i'll use it on dates sometimes i'll just play <laughs> the video <laughs> um neil listen tell them where oh, they wait. can find you the show unacceptable oh, show.com oh yeah we didn't get to the your anklet please we didn't no it's just ayahuasca Oh really? It's just an ayahuasca, uh, a uh, tribe in um, in uh, the Amazon, either Peru or Brazil, makes does drinks the medicine and makes these uh, makes these like makes whatever jewelry or whatever the fuck this is, and uh, it just is like a little reminder of uh, that I'm flying away at the end of all this. Mm. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't know what you're doing over there with this. <laughs> <laughs> He has a moment of vulnerability. Yeah, <laughs> it's a stop. moment of vulnerability. And then I went funny. And then immediately and then I went oh, funny. fuck uh, everybody. I don't <laughs> like you. you're doing over there. <laughs> We haven't even made fun of Al's trash ass pants either. So, oh, yeah, the yeah, pants are crazy. He's sitting behind the desk with all the most garbage pants I've ever seen. He's in front of the desk. 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 We really went two hours. No one brought it up. No one said it. Because we couldn't see. I guarantee you everyone's going to be answering my question. No, they're not. Dude, what the fuck? Red pants. What? I didn't know you were Jamaican. I got the dress. Oh, yeah. Um. Uh, Guarantee I like when it. a guy tries to break a new style. It's like just get, just let it. <laughs> yeah. Nah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What oh, exactly are those work. for? It what might work doing? out, but you're gotta. Nah, you're I'm really gonna... just trying to break some. You're trying to break it? Yeah, just break a style. 
from the from the <laughs> brand Rude. I, I guarantee you. What? <laughs> from the very underground, no one's really million heard of dollar <laughs> fashion brand Rude. You're yeah, trying to break it for Yeah, but it's still a different, them. still a different type of stuff. Gosh, you got yeah, you. Yeah, cargo <laughs> pants. You're gonna break. You'll be, you'll cargo be wearing pants. it in a month. Like, it's a, <laughs> you'll be wearing it in a month. Like that's what happened to it. Like, yeah, I'm trying to break. I wear a deep cut shirt in there. That was deep cut shirt. Like that's what happened to it. Like that's what happened to it. I think he's right. That's what happened to it. Get some muscles, get some muscles, and get some muscles. Like, come on, guys. This is what happens, bro. Come on, bro. Come on. Come on, son. Come on, son. I would say this is unacceptable. You know what else is unacceptable, Neil? There's a play going on right now. Can we call it a play? There's a play. There's a play. There's a play going on. There's a play. There's a play. It was started as such a good segue. It was gonna be such a good Yeah, and then he called it a play. It's a play. Um where's that at? Gymnasiums? What are we doing? What are we uh unacceptable show.com? Unacceptable show.com. Six weeks. it's six more weeks. I've been doing it. Add another six weeks. Yeah. Wow. this is the craziest thing ever to me. Because the idea, the pressure of selling tickets on the road is already a lot. I've already sold 8,000, and this I have to crazy. sell, like, way more. But in the same city. I know. That's what's... Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah. That's nuts. It's, uh, it's wild. And do you have people come back? Yeah, I think and so. Is that, is yeah. that make you feel uncomfortable ever? I can't okay? tell. Okay. I don't... Oh, I, you black out the audience. Uh, I won't allow myself to see cutaways. <laughs> um, no, I, I can, you can only see a few ropes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't, you know, pick on Puerto Ricans like you do. <laughs> um, um, Just one. <laughs> Just that um, guy in his pants. The uh, yeah. So I, the, I people come back. People come back because they like it, but I don't know who. That was worse than play. That was way more. <laughs> more than my, I don't uh, insult minorities like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Puerto Ricans. Puerto Ricans. It works. It works. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But unacceptable show. Unacceptable show dot com. Dot com. Now that you think I'm actually pretty funny. He's yes. actually pretty funny. <laughs> yes. I'm at actuallyprettyfunny.com. I think that's a better <laughs> I think that's a way Yo, better way. You know, we can buy that handle. Actually, actually pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. But no, go check out Neil's show. Neil, you know I'm a huge fan. I think yeah. you're absolutely brilliant. I know that you don't want me to compliment you and shit like that. You get no, comfortable. No, I, I, I fuck with all you but, guys. Uh, I watch all the clips. We oh, love you. you buddy. And uh, I'm excited I to meet I was excited brilliant. to meet all you guys. Yeah. Because yeah. all the, the other thing about these shows are, uh, I said this on Rogan one time, these are like sitcoms. Whether you yeah, guys realize yeah, yeah, it or not, like yeah, you're yeah. all, like I remember when you got locked up in Amsterdam, oh, yeah. and I yeah. your your wedding episode, yeah, yeah. and you did the college where you went back to your college. Like I know the fucking narratives right. of all these like shows that I don't even, yeah. I don't watch every episode, but I know enough to it's like. The I watch the same relationship that yeah. we had with yeah. sitcoms yeah. back in the day. It's the 100%. same thing of like, oh, it's so and so, ding dong. Yeah, here comes fucking. No, look at his stupid pants. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So you agree they suck, right? The pants are off. Nah, well, I didn't. There's a. It looks Don't like say anything. I want to get that into ankle it, shit on. Yeah, it's the only way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> looks like a parole bracelet for gays. Yeah. <laughs> 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 for, <laughs> you said for gays. gays. Or gays. <laughs> I haven't heard. I haven't heard gays in a long time. Bro. <laughs> Parole bracelet for gays. Okay, we have the title of the episode. Um, Neil, Pretty we love great. you. We appreciate Good you. Show. Yo, go check out Neil's show, man. And I'm coming not this week, next week. Great. And I want to buy my. You got to be vaxxed. I'm vaxxed, bro. I know, but I, that's for the black people. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, can you can you just have a cart? <laughs> yeah, what if you got the cart? I, I literally heard a bunch of kids like plotting in front of the show. I was just sitting in front of the show. And they're like, nah, I got the fake cart. I'll get you. And that's got to like, make you feel good, though, that they want to break no, the law. No, yeah, that they're willing to break the law for me. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, the 75% of black people cannot come. When I did the Breakfast Club, I was like, well, this is practice. <laughs> <laughs> This is practice for a white radio show oh, who God. can actually come. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Neil Brennan, go check out Neil, man. Uh, make sure you check out the show and let him know that uh, we told you to go there. Okay? Harass him. Do you yeah, sh yeah. shake hands with people after the show? I, I come on time. Oh, I love yeah, it. Thanks. I love it. Man of the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real regular guy. Unacceptable show. Thank you guys so much. Flagrant 2. Peace. Yeah.